Good evening and welcome to episode 17 now of our Eagles nesting series. While we all uh, stay alert, stay at home, uh, practice our social distancing and stay safe. We are looking back at some of the most historic moments throughout our franchise's history over those 25 years in Newcastle. And of course, starting with that first 2005 trophy win, going all the way through the years, we'll go right up to uh, title win number 25 the trophy this year but tonight we are going back to uh, that 2012 season when we finished the clean sweep for the uh, second time ever in the club's history and we are joined by some very special guests once again i want to welcome back our then head coach fab flanoy welcome back fab thanks thanks for having me assistant coach dave forrester welcome back yeah hello dan and member of 10 Eagles seasons teams in total, uh, finishing in this season that we're going to look back at tonight and the playoff final. Uh, Bridgie, welcome back. Andrew Bridge. Hi, Dan. How are you doing? So this was a amazing season for the club. Um, the trophy, the cup and the league all in the bag already, Dave. Um, but yeah. I think it's safe to say that to get to this final, this um, uh, 2012 BBL playoffs final, uh, Cheshire Jets in the semi had us on the ropes at home uh, at Sports Central, but uh, a very, very different game, that convincing win and the aggregate win um, at the, the Northgate Arena uh, put us through to this, this final at the NIA. But it, it's, uh, it's a tough one, isn't it, for, for the guys uh, up against uh, another top team in the league that season in uh, the Leicester Riders? Yeah, it was. It was a strange season because basically every team that we came across wanted to have a shot at us and we kind of knocked them down and then they didn't get back up and there was another team come along. So to start with, it was Plymouth in the Cup and Plymouth in the Trophy. Then when we, not, when we beat Worcester in the league in the last second, which is the game that we saw, um, they then got knocked out of the playoffs by Cheshire. And Cheshire won like nine or ten of their last games to get them to the playoffs. Uh, and um, then they came across us, so we had to beat them and knock them down. And that kind of left us with Leicester. And Leicester, we'd beaten in the Cup semi-finals back in November um, when they were kind of a different team. They had, some few, they had a few different players, um, including Flinder Boyd. Uh, and but we kind of came back a, across them again um, for the for the playoff final, uh, and so it was it was strange in that there was not one major rival throughout the year. There was a continuation of a number of different teams that came up to, to take a shot at us, and you now our guys managed to kind of stave them all off, um, culminating in that Cheshire final, in that Cheshire semi final where you know. It was, it was very, very tough. So, yeah, so it was the same group who played basically the whole season, you know, seven musketeers, basically. Um, and um, at this point in time, everybody was hurt. I remember um, Paul had hurt his calf in the game that we saw last week. Bridget had hurt his shoulder. Um, everybody else was playing, like, lots lots of minutes. And, you know, we played doubleheaders two weeks before in the playoffs. So... You know, it was kind of a bit of a a bit of a not a struggle, but a, we were battling on through to the end. I don't think we actually ended up playing our best basketball at the end or in the final, but we it, it was the, the the fact that we got there and and um, and once we got there and during the game, I never thought we were going to lose the game. Um, we just looked comfortable in that basketball game. Uh, briefly, we had a game plan. You guys have watched the video. And we, we shut down Cameron Rundles, who was our main point guard and their main scorer. Um, we shut down the shooter, Wisbicky, and um, we challenged Aaron Hardy and, and Drew Sullivan to kind of score enough points to beat us. And that really wasn't their game at that time in that season. And I think we held Camp Rundles to one of ten for four points, and their team couldn't make a foul shot either, which helped. But um, overall, it was, you know, it, was, it was a wonderful way to finish, but I don't remember that much about the game. I just remember, I remember that I didn't think we were going to lose. Just to, to jog your memory a little bit, and, and Fab, I'll turn to you. Um, you know, former Eagle Drew Sullivan uh, in this game, 
uh, you know, took the riders to an, an early lead, I think went on a, a 10 for nothing run uh, in the first, which we, we finished down by nine. Uh, strong second quarter performance tied us at 31, but it was, uh, it was a, a nervous start perhaps for, for you guys in this game. I don't, I don't, to be honest, again, I probably would agree with Dave. I don't remember too much about the, the game in particular. Just remember going through the battle of, of that season and us finally getting there. And I, I think uh, in retrospect, it was just like, you know, as they said, you know, we had to always, you know, knock down another team. Um, and it always felt as if that each team came up and presented their own challenges and their own strengths um, that they had to, 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 to the various challenges that season that we had. And I just remember, you know, it always being felt like it was uh, everybody else's turn because the, 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 the whole logist of that season was uh, – we're going to be the team to knock the Eagles off and they were too old or they don't have enough or, you know, something is, is going to happen. I do believe that we were that season. We only had, we, we were one import short um, that season. Um, and it was the whole thing of finally going through everything that we got to going through, uh, especially with the getting, getting into the, the playoff final and then meeting Leicester, it was just like, oh, here we go again. And, you know, are we going to have enough? And the whole game plan for us, um, well, one of the things that I have wanted to make sure that, you know, I, I put through it, you know, in, in, in the finals and, you know, everything is that we actually don't worry or, or don't pretty much panic uh, because we knew we were going to have to absorb you know, the first punch. We knew that they were going to make a run on us. And for us, it was just about making sure that, you know, we absorb it because we all, we, we all, we were always going to, we were always going to make a run. Uh, but the biggest thing was we wanted to make sure that we had the last run and not necessarily worried about the, uh, uh, about the first run, uh, in particular in the games with, with, within finals. Uh, and then also making sure that we didn't get behind by, by, by too far. Plus, we knew uh, that uh, they had Drew uh, uh, Slim, uh, Drew Sullivan, uh, a.k.a. Slim. Um, and, you know, uh, he, was, he, was, he was the piece that they've been missing for, you know, a number of seasons in, 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 in terms of, uh, of, of Leicester. Uh, and obviously with him um, playing for us uh, before, I think that he helped give them a mentality uh, that was different from all the other teams that, that, that we faced at that particular point in time because all other teams that we faced, they didn't know how to win. They didn't necessarily know how to play. They, they, you know, they, were, they were riding off of um, um, playing off of emotions and playing off of um, talent that they had. Uh, either they were playing off the, the talent or the emotion uh, and they didn't necessarily um, bring it all together um, over, you know, a 40 minute game or over a season. Uh, and I think that was our strength. And I think we had the guys that knew how to, how to do that. And I think when Drew, I'm not taking nothing away from uh, Lester um, in, it, in, in it and of itself, I think once Drew went to uh, Leicester, he helped bring them that dynamic. Uh, and I knew we were going to probably be, be particularly in trouble because of, uh, of, of, because of, of, of Drew. So the biggest thing that we said uh, going into that game plan, again, what Dave said is that we was going to cut off, uh, we were going to cut off the, the supporting cast uh, and their, uh, uh, Aaron Hardy more so than Drew uh, uh, to beat us. Um, uh, we were going to make it. We were going to make it real tough, and we knew we couldn't really let Drew go off because I think Drew presented, um, gave them hope, and gave them a belief uh, they didn't have. And I think that Aaron Hardy and and, and Cameron Rundles and, and the rest. And I think you know they had 
you know, the young players. I think they had young Jamel at that point in time and young Connor at that point in time. Those guys were the Connors and the Jamels and the league wasn't what, what it is, what, what, what they were in, in, their, in their future. They were just, you know, learning, you know, the, 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 the highs and lows and, and, and learning how to particularly win. And as again, as I said before, I think Drew Sullivan gave them that, uh, helped bring that there. So I just remember in, in that game and in particular in that final, making sure that we cut off all the supporting cast because they're not going to know what to do. And more importantly for us, uh, learning when, when is going to be the right time to flip the switch or to push the button or when we're going to turn the afterburners on um, because we were all hurt, we were all beat up, we were all tired, and, and we knew we was not going to allow uh, 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 for us after everything that we've been through to lose uh, uh, at that stage and, 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 and at that moment. You know, it's, it's just, it was just too much that we had to go through to, uh, to, to, to get there. Bridgie, we've spoken before in some of the nestings and Fab there just uh, mentioned this switch uh, that, that uh, you guys could flick uh, the afterburners and, and really turning it on. Um, this, of course, for you was, was uh, your final season uh, as, as an Eagle. Um, looking back at this game must bring back some amazing memories but also of that time and of this team and, and being able to, to have that in the reserves that, that you've talked about before, the, the flicking of the switch with this, this great bunch of guys who you got used to playing so tightly with. Yeah, I think um, similar to Fab and Dave, it's probably the one game I don't really remember. Um, when Dave was just talking about the, the scouting plan, you know, that kind of brought it back a little bit. I remember the night afterwards, the next day, uh, but I didn't <laughs> I think the boss stopped the wife was out of home again. Not for food. Um, but like in terms of the game, I don't, the game I don't remember too much. I think that season, like everyone said when talking about it, um, there was so much going on in terms of different teams and um, when you, you're going up against the same team in the successful years and you're kind of you know you're focusing on them and you know what you're doing but we went through that many times with different teams like Plymouth you know, everybody just hated Plymouth you know it, I mean it wasn't their fault it was a long way away but people you know just weren't <laughs> went down with that trip um, and you know, and it, it was just you know, like I said, we ran with a bit a bit shorter bench. I think for me, you know that uh, watching the videos back, like all of them, you know the first ones we won, you could tell people were excited, and then we went through a period probably through kind of oh seven to um, two thousand and ten where you know we just won. That was it. On to the next one. Whereas you watch the games back from 11, 12, like we were excited and jumping around when we won. Because I think it was a tough year. And by the time we got to the final, the fourth one, I think when we did it, it was just kind of, well, for me, like a relief that it was done. You know, because there were, like we said, there was some people on that team that had not swept before. You know, so I think it was, I'm glad that Charles got to do that. You know, no matter what he said, I considered him part of that 2005-6 team, even though he might not have played in the cup final. So it was important that he, you know, he felt he got that sweep. So that was, you know, that was good. And it was good for the, for those guys to experience it. Um, and that probably helped them when they went on to do it um, in the next couple of years. So um, I think that game is more just, that's one of the ones I think I was most relieved that we'd, um, you know, we'd got that win and, you know, we got out there pretty quick and got back to Newcastle. Dave, yeah. this game, um, as we've said, was such a, uh, a point in the club's uh, history in terms of doing that sweep for a second time. Uh, you were in the stands as a fan uh, that first time and, you know, 
do you think doing it a, a, again was was a, a, a very sort of like a, a moment that you saw coming um, in, in the evolution of, of this team? Oh, I don't know. There was so much competition. And at the end of the day, we were, you know, we had seven senior players, you know, to, to, to win the amount of games that we won. And I think when we won the league, we were like 24 and three when we won the league. So then you have to win the two, two different two-legged semi-finals, two different finals. Then you have to win the playoff quarterfinals. And eventually you hit a wall at some point. We hit a wall in the first half against Cheshire in the first leg of the semi-finals. And they go up 28. And at that point, you know, you know it's enough. People could say, players could say, look, we've given our best shot. That's as much as we got. You know, we only had seven guys, you know. And um, to come back through that again, it was literally just going to the next game with this team. I mean, we got a little break after we won the league because we won about we had about three or four games left, so we got a little break to rest up, which really kind of helped us. And in the first playoff game, we came out and beat Guildford by forty. But I wouldn't say um, I think the the achievement in 05 or six was extraordinarily impressive. Um, particularly as, you know, Fab and Bridgie and, and Drew weren't there for some of it as well. But the, the depth that we had on that team, um, I think that team, knew, that team knew it was dominant. And I don't think our team, our team knew we were going to win, but I don't think we knew we were dominant. And I think we knew we had to show up every game and we had to take every team on because there was four or five teams in that, in that kind of cluster who all thought they had a shot at us. And on any specific day, they did have a shot at us. Um, but on a kind of a mentality level, they didn't. So when it came down to the close plays, when it came down to the big plays, when it came down to getting a rebound or getting a steal or getting a tip in or making a shot, um, we had not just one guy who had been there, but we had four or five. You know, probably actually more than... And, and, um, Tomo and Bridgie and... Joe and um, Fab and Charles and then Dee and Paul Go. I mean, anybody could step up and make that play. So yeah, it was a it was a great it was a great achievement. More probably for the the amount of effort and the amount of um, involvement that each guy had. You know, you, they they really couldn't have a day off because if one or two guys had a day off on any night or weren't quite there, then we wouldn't win. You know, the, the, the gaps in the, in, in the quality of the squads weren't as great as they were, I don't think, in 2005 and 2006. There was a huge <laughs> amount of commitment from all of the guys, uh, Fab, playing in, the, in all of these games. I mean, um, I'm going to uh, – I'll blur out the score when we actually uh, put this online for everyone to see, but I want to share this clip with you, which is uh, late in the fourth quarter. Off the back of the ring, Flanoy, can he save it? No, he can't. Whoa, Flanoy jumps. The advertising hoarding and the Leicester bench there. He's okay. His, wow. His desire is all is second to none. Look at this. Oh, it's just unbelievable hustle. Wow. He could have really hurt himself yeah, there, Pat Flanoy, but he's just trying to keep the ball alive. Ah, close was he to him, the advertising board Oof. as well. You jump the ad boards uh, and uh, <laughs> the riders bench. Um, and that was to keep the ball alive after uh, a rebound from Paul Gores. I love that clip because I think that it demonstrates that uh, at this point in the game, like I say, without revealing the, the score for people who are going to watch this because it is quite late in the fourth, we are out in front. Um, but that ferociousness never stopped all the way to the final buzzer for this, this team in this season. Well, yeah, I mean, that was a, I, I wish I had those legs now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just, it wasn't, it, it wasn't ever anything to do with, 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 with us. It had nothing to ever do with the score. It was always about making sure that we had um, a, a, a dominance uh, about us that, you know, when when, we're, when the game is being played, we're going to play it. Uh, and as Dave said, and, and, and Bridget could comment on it, like we knew 
um, like the, the, the earliest suite that we had, again, as Dave said, we were just dominant. We knew we were better than everybody else. And it was, and it was nothing that anyone can do about it. And, and we knew that. And this particular year, we had to fight for it. And in particular, you know, we had, there were teams that were actually had uh, more talent than us because they had more, more people and, and they had more talent. But at any point in time on that court, we always had the right guys on the court that was going to make the right play. And we all knew that we couldn't have any days off. We couldn't have any time off because the one thing that we were always plagued with that season uh, in particular were we weren't good enough or we didn't have enough talent or we was too small or, you know, uh, Bridge was, wasn't athletic or he wasn't good enough or Charles and Joe, uh, Charles couldn't play any defense or he was too slow or Tom Moe was, you know, wasn't mobile enough. He wasn't big, big enough in the post. Darius wasn't, you know, experienced enough. Paul was just a rookie. He just don't know. We had, you know, we, we had so many, you know, uh, things that, that, we were, that we were battling against um, more or less from a respect standpoint um, uh, across the league. I remember, you know, they was telling around and you know, whether or not Joe was good enough to get MVP that year or, or not, or the way that we were playing. And it was just like, every time we went out, we wanted to prove to the league and to the world that we were, we were what we were and we were actually good. And if you're not going to give us the respect, we're going to take it. And I think that fed into it to the point where when we were tired or we were hurt, or, you know, the, 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 the thing is, the, the games, when, when you're playing and, and, and you're playing in these types of games, um, the, the, the relentlessness of it was the fact that we had, you know, you, you, you play, you get in more, you have to play in more games. Because when you win, you have a, you know, a two-legged final, you have a two-legged semifinal, so you get more games added on to it. Plus... You know, we still were heavy in the community. We still was, you know, fulfilling our Hoops for Health project. We still, you know, was, 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 was out every single day. So on a weekend, we're battling, you know, two-legged games, back-to-back -back games or whatever. So there was no time, you know, in, in essence, to, to recover from that at, at times physically. But we never wanted to let our, our mental edge drop. So late in the past, late in any game, we wanted to make sure that we exerted our dominance to let every team know that we're not letting you back in the game. And if you ever dare show yourself again, you're going to get met with the same thing because we knew we were going to see them again. And I think in particular for me, in particular with Lester, I knew once they had once Rob and Drew Sullivan got together, once Drew got there, I knew we were going to be seeing Lester over and over again to the point where, you know, they were going to be the new rival. And it was different from Plymouth, and different from Glasgow, a little bit different from Sheffield, different from um, uh, Guilford or Thames Valley at that point where they were, the, they were a, a version of us that were coming up and, and coming along and that tenacity. So I wanted to make sure that we always kept and held that tenacity even in that game, even, you know, to, to the end. I think you've summed it up absolutely brilliantly there, Fab. Uh, before we go, because uh, I know we are short on time and we've got this great game for everyone to, to see uh, tonight coming up next. Uh, Bridgie, this is uh, going to be your final season, um, uh, obviously, for us uh, to, to see um, in the, the history books for our Eagles. Um, what is your sort of like standout memory, if you like, of being a part of, of this, this franchise and uh, being a part of, of the Newcastle Eagles program? I mean, there's so many memories over the years. It was it was ten great years. You know, some of the things I remember um, coming up as a a young player. You know, having been at Sheffield and then leaving and coming to Newcastle. Um, I came up um, to practice. Obviously, I've been speaking to Fab. I never spoke to Paul or Sam. Um, I practiced, um, and then on that night, Paul and Sam came and took me out to dinner which you know, I kind of, you know, set 
not necessarily something you'd expect the owner of a club to do with at the time a young English player. Um, but you know that was the start of you know what was and still is a great relationship with Paul and Sam. You know, and that kind of you know for me set the kind of pattern and tone for how my time at the Eagles was. They you know they looked after me um, really really well. Um, you know, some of those early years before we started winning, you know, it was tough. Um, but we had a group of guys that kind of stayed together, you know, TJ, Jeremy, Charles. Um, and we learned to win over the next couple of years um, until we, you know, obviously then started having the success in 2005 and then 2006. And, you know, that first one was all, you know, it was always special. And the circumstances around it, obviously going to Brighton, playing Brighton um, and coming out with the win. And that just kind of set, set it off. And, you know, it was, you know, it was just like, uh, you know, almost when you look back now, you didn't, I didn't appreciate at the time what, you know, the kind of things we were doing and what we were um, and how we were doing it. And when you look back now, like you realise that, you realise, you know, some of the great players you played, some of the, you know, the teams I played on were just, you know, were incredible. I was, you know, I never look at myself, you know, as a, as a great player. You know, I just did my job and to kind of go back to what, you know, Fab said. Um, you know, we had talent on a lot of our teams. You know, there's no denying that. You know, DJ Walker, Jay Moore, Jeremy Hyatt, you know, uh, Charles, Joe, Drew. You know, you can list Leonard. You can list players to the coming out of years. But the one thing we did, we... You know, we had talent, but we were going to play harder than you. You know, and that's what, you know, carried us so many of the time. Not the fact that we might have more talent. Sometimes we didn't. We just always played harder than the other team. That, um, you know, that's what carried us. And, and teams knew that. When you came to play Newcastle, you, know, you, you were going to play hard. And, and that's, that's all I had. Yeah, I was, a, I was a decent shooter. I could do a few things, you know, when I played. But I was just going to play harder than you um, and if you went up against me you know you know you, you knew that was what was coming for me and that's you know I managed to keep a career for for 13 years just because just because I played hard. Bridgie thank you so much for for being here um, and for everything that you did for our Eagles throughout uh, all of those, uh, those seasons. Um, we have got a great game for everyone to see tonight. Um, and it is, of course, the game that we win to uh, get that clean sweep uh, in the bag for the second time for our Eagles. Um, while we uh, just wrap up and stay, uh, uh, say, stay safe, and uh, thank you for your time once again. Uh, Fab Fanoi, all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Dave, thank you so much for joining us uh, again. Uh, we look forward to hearing from both of you as we uh, go through uh, many more games and many more historic moments in the club uh, all the way to the Eagles Community Arena in uh, a couple of weeks' time. Thanks, Dan. I think just I, mean, I think it should be said that you know, this was Bridgie's last game. And, you know, Bridgie played for this. People probably don't know now watching how important he was to, to the Eagles over that time between 2004 and 2012. Just the amount of um, what he made of himself and the amount of big games that he had in the way that he took on the captaincy, took on the responsibility within the club. Um, you know, it was great that we, we got to go out on a win and we got, he got to go out on a clean sweep as well. So, you know, people talk about players in the past who've had fantastic accomplishments with the Eagles and big names and, and Jeremy and TJ and... And Chuck and, and Leonard and whoever, um, but Bridgie was just as important and, and just as effective, um, and, and people should never forget that. Yeah, especially making his way up as as a player to actually being the captain um, uh, of the team and equally the leader of of our band, of our group, uh, was just uh, extraordinary. Um, you know, he's, 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 he's a credit. And uh, just to give a little bit of context behind it, uh, when I first got the job uh, at Newcastle, um, uh, I was driving up to Newcastle and I got a phone call 
And my first phone call was from uh, Andrew Bridge. Uh, and he asked me, what was I heard that you had a job at uh, uh, Newcastle. And I, I said, yeah, I, I, I do. I'm on my way up there now. Uh, and he said, well, um, yeah, he said, well, Fab, uh, if you have me, uh, I'll, I'll, I would like to come play for you. And I literally told him, I said, Bridgie, I'm literally driving up to meet with Paul now. Uh, and I, I don't know what's what. I don't know a budget. I don't know what we have. And Bridgie turned around. He said, Fab, I don't care. Said, uh, you know, I don't necessarily think that there's going to be a, a, a path for me here at, at Sheffield because the previous year we had played, uh, we had both played in Sheffield. Um, I moved up to Newcastle the year, the year, one year, and then obviously the year after I, I've, I've gotten a job. And Bridget was there, he was a young boy, a uh, young player, and he just said that there, there isn't going to be a path for me. And, I believe that, you know, that you'll give me a chance. And if you give me a chance, you don't have to worry about nothing. Um, you know, I'll make my way and I'll prove to everyone uh, that I'll be able to play. And with that, I said, Bridgie, said, you're in. <laughs> uh, and he made good on his word. Uh, he made good on his word. Uh, uh, and uh, he's, you know, been a captain, a leader, you know, helped us in, in the community and all sorts. And, you know, he's more importantly, he's he's a friend. He's one of my closest friends. So, uh, just wanted to say hats off, as as, as Dave said. Uh, I think uh, him as a as a as a as a person and as a basketball player uh, that played in our league, he has had huge um, accomplishments uh, and shouldn't be taken lightly. Fab, thank you so much. And Dave, thank you too. So let's get into it then. Here we go. It is back to Sunday, the 12th of May, 2012 at the NIA in Birmingham. It's our Eagles against the Leicester Riders. And what a game we've got for you. The coverage is from Sky Sports. Stay alert, stay home if you can to control the virus, protect the NHS and social care and save lives. Enjoy this game. Thompson misses, it's batted up by Smith though! No. For the offensive rebound, Smith lets it go and he hit. No, what a game! It is a one-shot game here at Sports Central. What a win for the Newcastle Eagles. Gives Ryder to lead, still chance for a shot. Royce that goes up high. Oh my goodness, what a shot from Cameron Rundles. Oh, he goes in and flushes it down. Confirmation of the playoff final, the Newcastle Eagles will take on the Leicester Riders. Hello and welcome to the NIA for the playoff final of the BBL Championship. As you've just seen, our two finalists are the Newcastle Eagles and the Leicester Riders. It looks set to be a very tight game and the crowd here are certainly expecting a very tough contest indeed. And I'm delighted to say that I welcome along Vince McCauley and Tony Garbalotta, of course, the head coach of the Mersey Tigers. Tony, I'm going to start with you first of all. You were here this time last year. How impressed have you been with both these two teams, though? Well, I actually think these we've got the two best teams that are playing the best basketball at this moment. I felt that there were three standout teams from this league this year. Plymouth Raiders were one. They were in the one of the finals that we showed on Sky Sports earlier. And now we've got the two heavyweights, Leicester Riders and Newcastle Eagles. Vince, what's been the difference, do you feel, for the Leicester Riders this season? Well, I think the big thing for the Leicester Riders is Rob Paternostro is a fantastic recruiter of talent. And he's brought in two sensational players in Cameron Rundles and Aaron Hardy. But I think the biggest move he made all season long was bringing in the Great Britain captain, Andrew Sullivan, to anchor the team and give them the heart to get to finals. You know all about Drew Sullivan. He nicked him off you, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> How big a player is he, though? Well, you know, I've known Drew since he was uh, started playing basketball at 13 years old so I know a lot about him he's a winner he won you know basically every single junior championship he could and he was he's the Great Britain captain and obviously he had a great great season with us last year winning almost all the trophies he's a winner that's the only thing you need to worry, worry about him and like I said to many people if you took Drew Sullivan off of the Leicester Riders they probably wouldn't even be in the top four in this league and I think that's the testament to show you how what, he, what type of player he is they've got a strong American contingent haven't they Vince have you been surprised how well they've settled this season. 
Well, yes, because, you, I mean, you're used to seeing great talent come over to the BBL. And, and of course, these two guys are very talented, in particular, like I say, uh, Hardy and Runnels. But also, don't, don't forget Brett Royster. But the big thing is, they've settled down very well. You don't expect rookies to take you to finals. You don't expect rookies to win big games for you. But those guys have played with a gay abandon that's brought them, you know, great, fantastic basketball for the Leicester fans. But Fab, meanwhile, has won everything they possibly could this season. Uh, so how impressed are, have they I've been? i got to admit, you know, like, obviously last year they, they really had some problems. Fab had those personal health problems. And what he's done to bounce back this year is absolutely sensational. Um, added a great player in Andy Thompson. Brought back his core contingent of, uh, of his players that he's always had. And to be honest with you, they've been the standout team. They've been the team that every team has to aspire to be. And I've always said that whenever I've been on. They're the team that they're the championship team. They're the team to beat. They've won all three trophies, and it's up to Leicester to see if they can stop them winning all four. And I guess for the neutral, Vince, this is the final that perhaps everyone wanted to see this season. We're in our 25th year, and these two teams have been in it from inception as well. Absolutely. They're the old boys of the British Basketball League. <laughs> uh, but they're also the best two basketball teams in the country right now. And there's lots to sort of uh, really go gaga all over. You know, uh, in Chapman for the Newcastle Eagles, the best player in the league right now. Uh, Cameron Rundle was probably the most inspiring player in the league right now and Aaron Hardy the walking stats machine you know he's gonna look to get a triple double here like he does every other game yeah just a word on Aaron H how impressive have you been with him this season well I actually had him as the MVP of the league um, because I think that he's so important to what Leicester do I mean he's what he's the, one of their best rebounders scorers he's one of their best does passers everything. he does absolutely everything he happens to be their best defender as well and so when you add all of those things together there's some very very interesting things Hardy Chapman because both of them thought they should have won that trophy yeah. that's going to be a very interesting competition it will be a bit of a tussle well, you've heard what these guys think about it we want to know what your thoughts are as well email us tv at bbl.org.uk or you can tweet us bbl official do let us know your thoughts we want to know and we'll read a few of them out a little bit later though as you heard earlier on it has been a season of plenty of highs and not so many lows for newcastle eagles and even before this playoff final the mayor of newcastle decided to hold a civic reception for them so fab gave them a few hours off just at least and we caught up with them to find out how they plan to make this a clean sweep of trophies for the 2012 season the good times are rolling again for newcastle eagles winning the first three trophies this season a far cry from the disappointment of last year when they drew a blank this week the team was given a civic reception by the lord mayor of newcastle to honor those achievements and wish them well for today's finale it's been fantastic to, to come here today and uh, be invited along by the council that uh, gave me an opportunity for, for a change just to, to thank the team because uh, it's not something that I ever really get an opportunity to do. Um, sounds strange, I know, but uh, and I really mean it. You know, it's very heartfelt. The, the guys have uh, uh, gelled unlike any other team we've, we've put out, even, you know, even in our most successful seasons. Uh, I've not seen a team as closely knit as these guys. and. Uh, um, they've been a pleasure to work with on and off the court. Progress into the playoff final wasn't as relaxed as all this though. Cheshire Jets almost pulled off an upset in the semi-finals. The first leg didn't go to plan. Obviously we came out, we were very slow, the whole team. Um, and we didn't follow our, our game plan and our individual scouting that we normally do on players. We were happy in the sense that we uh, willed it down for 25. Um, to get within, you know, it's in reach and distance 10 points, is not impossible. Uh, the second leg was, it was tough, uh, everyone was tired and in the end they just couldn't keep, they couldn't keep making shots and, and, and we did in the end. Newcastle last won all four trophies back in 2006. How they'd dearly love to repeat that success here and repeat clean sweep. Well, it's important to go out with a win. I mean, everyone remembers a winner. Uh, we won three trophies already, but you, you, sometimes you're judged on your last game, and we all know that as professionals. So we want to go out there and just try our best and try to win the game. The final is, is a final, and at this point in time, there is, no, there is nothing I'm going to do that's new. Uh, there's nothing that I'm going to do that's going to prepare the guys. It will be all the same things of, of what, we've, what we've already done and what we've already accomplished. Uh, it's about our routine. Uh, and getting into it. But when we get to training, it's going to be uh, a switch um, and, and everything goes out the window um, and the intensity builds 
and you know the understanding of what we have to do and our, our overall goal is to win every basketball game that we play in. So what are their opponents here? Do the Eagles fear the Riders could take the season's final piece of silverware back to Leicester? The Leicester Riders are a good team, they finished second in the league. Um, they're a very defensive oriented team just like us, so we know um, it's not going to be an easy game. Obviously they got a lot of great players that could have won the Player of the Year award as well with um, Aaron Hardy and Cameron Rundles really leading the team and the GB captain um, Andrew is there too. So um, it's a great team and um, we played them five times this year so obviously we know each other very well and we're going to go out there and just try our best. Try their best, indeed they will. As you heard there, 2005-2006, the last time they got the clean sweep. I mean, Tony, how much pressure is on them today to do that? Yeah, uh, I, would, I actually don't think there's too much pressure on Fab. I mean, he's won so many trophies. I mean, he's you know he's now almost there as the winningest coach ever and player. So I, you know, I don't think there's too much pressure. I think there's more more pressure on Leicester Riders. I mean, this is their first major final for many years. It's the first major final of this kind of reincarnation of their management. So I feel they're going to be a little bit more nervous than what Newcastle is. I think the pressure's more on them than it is actually on Newcastle. We're seeing Fab there, Vince. He's uh, picked up Coach of the Year. Would you concur with that? Oh, most definitely. I mean, you run out of uh, superlatives for Fab, really, because um, he's done everything and done it again and shown the will to want to do it again today. Um, his determination, his, his heart of steel goes through his team, and he just doesn't know when he's beaten. Um, it is an important year, isn't it, for basketball this year, Tony, with the Olympics coming up as well and the merger of those two? Yeah, I mean, um, absolutely. The, the, the announcement today that the, of the, uh, the British Basketball Union is a major significant step forward. I'm sure Vince will be able to uh, talk more about that. Um, but the Olympic Games is a massive point for our game and of game of basketball in this country. It's going to be the catalyst to bring new young people and lots of different people into the sport and we need to take advantage of it. Yeah, Vince, how will that union affect you? Well, I think the big thing is that obviously everyone's been looking forward to the Olympics. We've talked about what the legacy of the Olympics is going to be for basketball. Mm -hmm. um, the great thing is that the federations are all coming together. Uh, FIBA is expecting us to compete in Europe on a regular basis, not just as, as a national team, but also as clubs. And at the BBL, we're, you know, as partners of the union, we're committed to having our teams compete in Europe on a regular basis. Let's join the party and all be good. So how can the sport go about raising its profile then, just briefly, Levin? Well, the biggest thing is we're always looking for exposure. You know, we have a, a huge problem in this country as far as facilities are concerned. That's the one thing that's holding our sports back, uh, because we definitely have the talent. Uh, we've got English players who go over to the United States and play in the NBA. We've got English players who go over to Europe and play for the top teams in Europe in the Final Four. Uh, and we've got English players playing in our own GB Olympic team looking to compete against the best of the Americans. So we have all the talent, we need some support with the facilities and we need exposure to higher level of competition. Okay. Well, we've heard uh, what it's been like for Newcastle Eagles. What about the Le Leicester Riders then? How have they been preparing for this game? We caught up with them earlier this week. It was with an emphatic victory over Glasgow Rocks that Leicester Riders stormed into the 2012 playoff final last Sunday. But coming into today's clash as underdogs, the team have been drilled hard in training by coach Rob Paternoster. But another trophy is up for grabs here in Birmingham today. The competing squad are slightly younger, but just as determined as the riders found out. We are in South Community Primary School. We're going to win the 2012 Blue competition. Yeah! Coach Paternoster might be the boss when it comes to the riders, but even he has to bow down to somebody. And that someone is none other than his nine-year-old son, Lucas, who's had a tip or two for his dad ahead of the final. So how do you feel about the weekend? I'm too confident that we're both going to win. And after all the coaching that I've done for you, we better win. Thank you, Dad. So with the support of a fellow team, Leicester turned the tensions back to their own practice. It's been 11 years since this club lifted a trophy. And for coach, players and fans alike, Taking home the playoff silver where will prove that they can be one of the powers in Britain's top flight. But with the Eagles sweeping all before them so far, the Riders know a win won't come easy. Yeah, you have to bring your A game, you know, for sure. Um, we can't bring our C game and expect to beat Newcastle. Um, we got to play at our best, definitely limit their three-pointers. You know, that they're really good three-point shooters, Smith and Chapman, and you know, Chapman's MVP of the league. So, um, you know, that, that's definitely a key to the game. Um, I mean, there's going to be a lot of stuff that we talk about over over the next week or so. Um, obviously, their players and uh, and the, the way they play, uh, trying to counteract a lot of that. Um, you know, um, you know, we spend we spend a, uh, some time watching video and 
talking about, well, this is what we need to do and all that. But, you know, a lot of it is just going to be going out and playing to our potential. Uh, we just want to make them work, you know. Um, they, they, they're really talented, well coached, and we just want to make them work on, on defense, you know. A lot of quick shots we don't want to take. We want to, um, we want to make them work and, and, and make them face our defense and show them that Show them that we'll be here to stay for the whole 40 minutes, you know. You know, I think spacing is very important against them. You know, um, they're very good at help defensive teams. So we got to really work on our spacing this week and, and, and just be ready, you know, make, make shots. The last couple of times we played them, we didn't make shots. And, um, you know, we have a lot of guys that can make shots, so we um, got to do that. Uh, Coach Panos has done a great job in recruiting players this year. Um, I mean, he always does. He always does. But uh, I think this group has come together uh, uh, very well and been focused on uh, winning, winning silverware this year. And I think that's what, what's one of the, or the biggest reason why we've been playing so well of late. And uh, I think that's what that's probably going to be the biggest reason why we why we can uh, potentially win on Saturday. Can the Riders win the final? Definitely. Most definitely, the Riders can win the final. Yeah, I, I strongly believe in my teammates. I strongly believe in uh, uh, you know our abilities uh, and our our togetherness. And I think that those are the things that will uh, see us through on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. You know, we have a, a lot of momentum going into the game. You know, a special group of guys. Uh, we've got a lot of really good players. So um, you know, it's a big, big, big time for us. And hopefully, we can get it done. The score that I will predict. Uh, the Riders on top. I'm not sure of the score. Maybe, maybe, maybe in the 80s somewhere. Maybe in the 80s. I don't know a score line, just as long as we have more points than them. But I'll say we're going to win 86, 83. I don't predict scores, but I will predict this. Our team will play uh, as hard as they can, and um, you know we'll do everything in their power to try to get a victory. Pat Nosto there. Um, it's in his blood, isn't it? Basketball you saw there with his son as well. This is such a big game, day for him. Absolutely, and uh, they wanted to win. His school wanted to win for his son there, and they actually did. They beat my team over there by two <laughs> points, so uh, he's got the first one on the map there. Maybe they get the second one. Rob's a great, passionate coach, and you can see that in his players. They love playing for him. Yeah, that's a, that's what it's all about. He's really connected this team. Has he? he might not have all the best players, but he's certainly got them together, hasn't he? Well, I, I think his team's really talented, but, uh, you know, this is his fourth season in the league, and um, he's been close to get into a big final a couple of times now and this is his time and I hope that his team and him are really focused in I think they will be and I think they're going to be a, a great we're in for a great game today we see the kind of the casual side of him what's he going to be thinking right now though you know is he going to be nervous what do you think I, I, I personally hope that he's I'd said it to Vince before we came <laughs> on air I hope he's not too hyped up because okay. you know this is his first big final and it's your nerves can get I remember my first final you know that you really really can get, you know, cut too tense and things can get out of your mind. And that's why I said that I think there's a little bit more pressure on Leicester than there actually is on Newcastle. So what do you do then, Vince? Uh, how, do, how do you get them to calm down, these coaches? Well, the interesting thing is uh, Rob will have run this through his mind so many times. He's wanted to be in a big final. He's, he's going to love the fact it's Newcastle because that's the team he's going to want to beat in the final when he wins his first trophy. Um, all it's going to come down to is the first flashpoint. Whether that be a referee decision, a mistake by one of his players, how he reacts, how he controls himself in that position is going to be how he's going to go for the rest of the game. OK, well, Mark Woods was lucky enough to catch up with both the coaches. Let's hear from them now. Rob, it's your first final as a coach, and I guess a pretty special occasion. It feels great. You know, uh, we worked hard this season, and uh, to be playing on the last day of the season uh, makes us all proud and uh, you know the atmosphere here is fantastic so we're excited to get it going. Some people might suggest you underachieved a little bit during the regular season. Does this team deserve a trophy? Well I think um, you know as far as underachieving I disagree. I think you know we were put together uh, just this season. It's our first time. It took us a while uh, to get to know each other. By the end of the year we were doing well and yeah I think we do deserve a trophy but um, Newcastle feel the same way. Aaron Hardy, Cameron Rundles, you've ridden the rookies this season for them. Any special advice you've given them today? No, I don't need to give those guys a lot of advice. Uh, they came in uh, ready to go. It was interesting, as rookies from day one, uh, they handled themselves like veterans, and uh, as everyone in the BBL knows, they're great players. Of course, here in Sky Sports, we're used to having you with us in the commentary team. If you were here today, not involved, 
Who would you back to win this? <laughs> well, I miss, uh, you know, I was sitting over there at the broadcast table. I didn't want to leave, but um, now it's exciting to be coaching. Um, I had to go with my guys. You know, we've been playing great basketball, but I do know one thing, that uh, the team we're playing is, uh, is a great team, a championship team, but I think it's going to be a great game for everybody involved. Fab, last season, no trophies for Newcastle. Did you sit back at the start of this season and challenge your guys to be here in the last day? I didn't sit back at the start of the season. I sit uh, sat back at the start of la at the end of last season when we lost to Sheffield on their own floor on their floor. Um, that's when it all started for us to rebuild this campaign to make sure that we get some silverware this season. You've won three trophies already this year. Does that put more or less pressure on you guys today? No, there's no pressure. Everything that you've done up until this point goes out of the window. You know, there's a, a, a game that's to be played uh, today, and the team that, you know, stamps they will out, but we remember, remember it on the last day of, you know, who's successful in lifting that last piece of silverware. Hardy and Rundles, they've been so impressive in this postseason. How do you contain those two? Yeah, I mean, we're just going to defend. Our game plan don't change for nobody, no opponent. We defend, 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 and when we finish defending, we're going to defend some more. They're undersized, perhaps inside. How much of a big influence is Andrew Thompson going to have on this game? I think all our guys are particularly going to have influence. Hopefully, you know, we'll be able to establish Andy and Darius inside uh, early, but they are uh, a well balanced and deep basketball team. Best of luck today. Thank you. Well, as we heard there, Rob normally does the co coms, but you're going to do that today, Tony. So before you go, I can't let you go without giving us a prediction. Uh, I, I'm going to go with Leicester by. Um, and I think it's going to be somewhere in the 80s. I don't think it will be low scoring. I think it'll be a little bit higher scoring. So that's my prediction, but I'm not very good at predicting, so hopefully Vince will be better than what I will be. Well, Vince, hold your thought on your prediction. We'll be back to you very shortly. It is almost time for the big occasion. Join us after the break for the main events as we'll be going courtside. Newcastle Eagles are taking on the Leicester Riders. It's going to be fast and Furious, stay with us on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the NIA here in Birmingham. It is the BBL playoff final between the Newcastle Eagles and the Leicester Riders. We're just moments away before they do battle to see who will become the 2012 champions. Let's go courtside and let's take a look at the benches with Mark Woods. Mark, how are they looking? Thanks, Vicky. Well, these two sets of players surprisingly calm when I spoke to them ahead of the game. Leicester's mantra, keep doing what we've done for the past month. Drew Sullivan saying this week in practice it's all been about the consistency. No surprise, they've won 11 games out of the last 14 and come in here as narrow favourites with the bookies. As for Newcastle, well, a couple of injury concerns for them this week. Paul Goss last weekend carrying an ankle problem. He says he isn't 100% but will play today. Same for Andrew Bridge, a shoulder issue for him. Some swelling still there. He did practice yesterday, but prepared to play on as they try to complete the Queen's sleep of all four major trophies this season. Thanks very much, Mark. So we heard there that, of course, scores with his ankle injury. That would have been a, a key player had they missed him. Well, he's uh, speed on speed. You know, that's what Paul <laughs> goes. So they're going to miss him because he's the quickest guy in the league. But really, they got through the, uh, the quarter semifinals with Fab at the point. They're used to playing like that. They've got five players on the floor there who all average double figures. So they'll cope with it as best they can because they know it's a big game. It's the last game of the season. There's nothing else to leave behind. Yeah, absolutely. How, who will Leicester Riders be relying on today, do you feel? Well, you know, the Leicester Riders are driven by Cameron Rundles. He's a really, really smart basketball player. Yes, he's got a lot of talent and a lot of skills, but he's really a really smart young man. Um, he's going to be key. Aaron Hardy has, uh, you know, got all the acclamation this year and he does a lot of work but it's, it's Rondos who sets them up but this is a final none of these guys have been in the final apart from Andrew Sullivan so they're going to be looking on him how do we cope in the final do we just do what we normally do how can we do what we normally do we know it's not a normal game yeah uh, it's going to be his calmness that's going to settle them down I think do you feel on days like this it's an old cliche but does the form book go out, out the window really it has to um, I think finals are all about two things either special people show up and play or people make mistakes it's one of those two things the last final we saw here it was Charles Smith who came out and had the game of his life um, we don't know what it's going to be is it going to be Joe Chapman is it going to be Aaron Hardy who can do it this time and we'll find that out I think in the first seven to ten minutes the fact that Fab is obviously player coach as well do you think that's a disadvantage or an advantage well everyone will tell you it's a disadvantage you don't have player coaches in Europe but Fab has proved everybody in the world wrong with the amount of titles he's won from that position if you saw that pre-game interview we just saw with Fab it looked like he was high on something he's high 
on the adrenaline of winning, and that's what he wants to do. OK, Vince, I can't let you go anywhere and enjoy this game without giving me a score prediction. Well, this is a very, very tough one. It's an exceptional group of players on both teams. I think it's going to be a very, very close game, but I do think the Leicester Riders will win their first title in 13 years. Wow, that's a bold prediction, isn't it? I think that's where the bookies are going, though. Let's find out how this one's going to go, then. Dan Ratledge is with uh, Tony Garbalotto for the commentary. Let's join them now. Thank you very much, Vicky. What a game we have in prospect. Before we look forward, let's look back. The two oldest teams in British basketball, Leicester founded in 1967, uh, Newcastle nine years later, but with two very different histories. While Sunderland as the Eagles were based in the beginning, won playoffs in 81 and 83, plus the 17 titles in the BBL era, Riders had to wait till 2001 for their first trophies when they won the cup and the playoffs. Newcastle beat uh, Leicester in the final of the trophy and the cup in 2006 and two th uh, 1991. Tony, these are two teams with tremendous history. Absolutely, and there is a lot of history in this game, um, no question about that. And pedigree players, I feel that we've got the two best teams in this league this year playing this game. And I think that that's a testament for, you know, these two teams, the way they played in the playoffs. So I am actually getting pretty nervous at this moment in this in this game now. I really feel this could be a great game for British basketball. Well, my favorite uh, stat of uh, context is Newcastle have won more trophies this season than Leicester have in 45 years of history. Let's get in to the uh, team lineup, starting with the Newcastle Eagles, and no surprise, they boast the vast majority of experience when it comes to playoff finals. Fab Flanoy's in his seventh, Andrew Bridge is sixth, Defoe is fifth, Charles Smith is fourth, Thompson third in a row. They have an amazing 18 winners middle medals between them. Nothing will phase them. And I, my stat for the, for the Newcastle Eagles is Andrew Thompson has now played the last seven consecutive major finals in British basketball. That, I know, I'm not even sure. That must be near a record, I think, for actual consecutive finals. He's been unbelievable. He certainly has. Let's have a look at the uh, Leicester Riders. Playoff final experience, well, of course, that comes courtesy of the Eagles, where Drew Sullivan and Tom Sherlock both played whilst winning the title with Newcastle. Yorick Williams has also twice been a runner-up, but rookies have been the driving force for the Riders this season. Cameron Rundles, Aaron Hardy, have you ever seen two guys coming straight out of college make the impact these guys have made? Absolutely not. Not two players. I've seen We've seen one player come in and play really well, but two rookies have been unbelievable. But I do want to talk about, Dan, okay, a player in Yorick Williams who I actually think a lot of people have overlooked. And I feel that if something goes wrong with Leicester and they start rocking, he could come in like he did last week in the semi-finals and make big shots to keep this team in the game. Yeah, Williams in that first leg, when Leicester were down 11, came off the bench, hit a couple of three-pointers when Leicester couldn't buy one from behind the arm, and that got them back into the tie. We want to look at a couple of crucial matchups today. Who's guarding Charles Smith? Who's guarding Joe Chapman for Leicester? That's going to be keys. But I think one of the keys for Leicester Riders to win this game is the performance of Brad Wisbicki. If Brad Wisbicki scores 16 plus points in this game, I believe Leicester Riders will be the champions of 2012. If he doesn't, it's going to be a real battle for Leicester to win this game. Here we go then, 2012 BBL playoff final. The ball goes up and we are underway. It's a bit of a scrappy jump ball. Joe Chapman, the league MVP, with the ball. Cameron Rundles in front of him. Newcastle with the first offense of the game. It's so, Hardy guarding Smith. He drives baseline. Tough shot. First point on the board for Way Smith. too easy. But good, good run, good post up move by Charles Smith. But, you know, Aaron Hardy has got to fight really hard there. Is Sullivan. They Sullivan backs out, driving in. It's knocked away from Sherlock. And just talk for a minute about the job uh, Tom Sherlock has, has done for the Riders this year. Absolutely, he's given them. He's given. He gives them a lot of energy from the start of the game. Okay, he really. He does a good job on the boards. He plays hard defense. It's bizarre, but when Brett Royster got injured, that's actually kind of helped the Riders, given the extra minutes quality minutes they've had from Sherlock as Sullivan fires up and also Anderson here comes Ex excellent defense there from from Andy Thompson drop back to Flanoy and two easy scores for Newcastle in the yeah, first yeah absolutely you see a team to me that looks very confident 
used to playing in these big games. I think Leicester are going to take a couple of minutes to get used to this game. Okay, they really got to get themselves. I get, they got to get an easy. They got to get an easy couple of baskets here to get set all their nerves. Foul is called off the ball, and I think it's Joe Chapman holding on to uh, Cameron Rundles as he was trying to run along the baseline. We've got three ultra experienced referees here Dale Atchison, Neil Wilkinson and Keith Williams and my view is this game will be very physical and the referees will allow them to play physical. Sullivan from behind the arc hits and you said the riders need to shoot the three ball well that's a great start. A absolutely and that was a tough tough make with a close out from Andy Thompson and that may settle Leicester's nerves they got to play hard defense here Brad was Vicky on Fab Flanoy. Flanoy trying to take advantage of it, stolen away by Hardy, riders have numbers, Sullivan, Sullivan goes past and Leicester in the lead for the first time. Yeah, it's a big, big game for big game players and, and there's a few of them on the court here. Smith and here's one of them. Barreling over uh, oh. Hardy and Hardy's going to get called for a oh. foul for being on the floor, I think. I, uh, you got it, that's, that's, that's a really, really, I, I would, if this is a play on, it's a travel in every single gym in the league. Look at him, great job, push off there also, and that's a travel, that's not a foul. I feel the guys got, uh, Newcastle got away with one there. Lobbed in towards Flanoy, trying to go to work on Wizbicki, and it spins around and drops in for the player coach. Yeah, that's the that's the crucial matchup there. I mean, they're going to allow Fab to go, you know, but if, if you're Leicester Riders, you're going to be happy that Fab Flanoy is the one shooting the ball, not Joe Chapman or Charles Smith. That's the matchup you want. Rundle says Chapman behind him almost. Chapman knocks it loose yeah, to the good foe. Yeah, defense, they're just doubling. The bounce pass is picked up, another steal from Hardy, too He's early. He's just unbelievable. He's unbelievable. He's just got incredible. Possibly, I know this is a big statement, I think he's the best defender we've ever had in this league. Wow, I mean, that is a, a big statement. That's, a, that's an incredible statement, but this guy is just, he, he does it from the weak side like he, does, he did there, shooting gaps. He does it on the ball, he blocks shots. He's an unbelievable rebounder. He's just a tremendous player without having to score lots of points. Well, there was uh, the talk about him and Chapman for, for MVP. Obviously, Chapman beats him in scoring, but that's just about the only category he beats him in. Yeah, uh, an excellent defense by Fab Flanoy here on the, uh, for, for Newcastle there. They're forcing what the, the ball screen. They're, they're forcing the ball screen away from being, actually being able to run. That's outstanding defense. Chicago Bulls do that in the, in the NBA all the time. Nice play from Joe Chapman going hard to the hole off the glass again a little bit too easy for me well, you know Leicester look a little bit tentative there defensively Barry Lamble getting ready to check into the game for the first time for Leicester See, they're not even guarding they're not even guarding Tom Sherlock there they're almost double it's double teaming Sullivan tried to force it into Sherlock and Sherlock is a capable shooter but uh, yeah, he... I mean Newcastle there that's three times now we've seen them not even defend Tom Sherlock. He's rolled into a position and they're double teaming Rundles and Ford and say to they say to Cameron Rundles, you can't beat us. You've got to pass that ball to someone else. Well it's Sherlock who sits down in replace for Lamble. Flanoy. Flanoy going again, bails out of the uh, shot and throws it through to Foe's hand. It's quite funny, you've got, a, you know, you've got Leicester also doing exactly the same. They're saying, we're not going to let Ch uh, uh, Charles Smith touch the ball, we're not going to let Chapman touch the ball, we're not letting Andy Thompson touch the ball. You other two players are going to have to look, have to beat us. Well, these two teams are built on their defense, that's for sure. Sullivan left open again. This one's a little short. Yeah, and Flanoy with the rebound. Newcastle will take that all day long. Good cut from Defoe to the hole for two, found by Smith. We, we talk so much about Chapman, Smith, Thompson. Everyone forgets Darius Defoe has had a sensational solid season and really deserves to be held in good regard. Nice pass from Hardy. He's blocked over uh, Lamble by Smith, and Newcastle come down with it. Newcastle very much with the upper hand through the opening four minutes. Absolutely, absolutely. Smith trying to drive, fires over Sullivan, rebound for Hardy. Hardy pushing it quickly. Still Hardy dumps off to Wizbicki and he lays it Brad, in. You know, Brad's a very underrated finisher in the basket. Yes, he's a great three-point shooter, but he's also a really good finisher at the basket as well. He's got to have a big game today. He's deceptively strong for one so slight. Yeah, absolutely. Chapman. 
Good defense by Rundles on the ball. Chapman fires up a three off the mark. Rebound pulled in by Wizbicki. I think Leicester got to push pace personally. There's a blocking foul off the ball. I think it's on Darius Defoe denying Lamble the lane. That's, that's a bit of a tic-tac foul. Personally, I'm not really sure. You'll see it here. Darius is, is, is stopping him going, moving into a position, but there's going to be too much contact yeah, for that to be called. I agree. Cameron's got to get into the game. You see they're forcing him to give up the ball. And then they're going to deny him. Chapman's actually almost face guarding him. Wizbicki looking to go against Flanoy. Goes right Great past move. him. That's a clean block. Says Great the job by Darius Defoe. Great job by Darius Defoe. Just wasn't sure whether it hit the board before he got there, but the referee said no. And Defoe follows up, misses. They're all boxing out. And eventually, Hardy has the rebound. Hardy to Wizbicki from the mid-range jump. Uh, that's, that's really important for the Leicester Riders. Right, Wizbicki playing well. Now they've got to get Cameron Rundles involved. Offensive foul called off the ball. I think it's on Joe Chapman. Yeah, Joe Chapman, you know, done, uh, tried to take Cameron Rundles to the, to the basket and post him deep. And uh, I think he just pushed off there. And that is the second personal foul on Chapman. So that's a big call. Yeah, now what you get, though, is you get a complete Please change. Do, yeah for Newcastle, they go from being a very big, slow, depend de de dependable type team to a very quick team with Paul Gowson. This guy really has been one of the keys to Newcastle's success as well. He's changed pace the whole of the season. It's amazing to have a player of that ability coming off the bench for you. Absolutely, and you know, he's like a jet. You're gonna see a complete quick jet now. Was Bicky. It's now Flanoy guarding uh, uh, Rundles. Oh, Lambo didn't see that, yeah. but Hardy fortunately bailed him out. But Hardy, oh, oh beautiful, beautiful move. Stand. Beautiful move by Aaron Hardy. He looks really like he's ready to play. Really aggressive. Look at the great crossover splits there through. No help defense because it was in the high set. Goes fires up for three. That's miles off the mark. Good offensive rebound from Defoe, and Lambo got the uh, foul in oh, there. The scouting report on Paul Gauss is no, no drives, three point shot. Inconsistent there, but Darius Defoe, the unsung hero. Rob, I like what Rob's doing here. He's getting all his players some minutes, okay, so they don't feel too nervous. They're already into the flow of the game. We've only had about five and a half minutes, and he's already got um, some multiple substitutions in. Jamel Anderson in and Yorick Williams as well. Yeah, so three of the starting five already on the bench for the Riders. Coach's decision, Defoe is short on the first as he looks to draw things level. Yeah, this is, this is going to be a really interesting game. I, no one's really rescued anything this moment. Oh, Andy great Thompson. work from Thompson to pull in the offensive yeah, Barry rebound. Barry he's got to be, he's got to do a better job than that. That's poor defense. Flanoy trying to find some space, fires over, a great shot from Flanoy over Lambo. Yeah, <laughs> Fab is in the best shape of his life, which is incredible to say, um, playing really well, but you're going to live with that versus, like I've always said, Charles Smith making, taking shots. Rundles with a little stop and go, Rundles, tough shot, but yeah, he hasn't really had any looks there. That was his first look at the game, and that was a real tough one. They're not going to let him, that's the scouting report on him, that's what you got to do. Goes, fires it over to Defoe, blocked by Lamble. Rundles play. comes down with it, Leicester again have numbers here. Oh, Rundles just slips, and Hardy says, it's all right, I've got it. Hardy drives in, back out to Lamble. Lamble steps into the paint. Nice job, Barry Lamble. Any point that Brad Barry Lamble scores is a, is, a, is a bonus for them. I've always said that. I know he's a really solid player, but I feel that they, if they get anything out of him, it's always, a bo it's always a bonus. He's normally a decent shooter from that sort of Absolutely. free throw line range. He doesn't often put the ball Excellent. on the floor. Excellent defense from him as well. Stepped up, took away Charles Smith's shot. Okay, now Leicester in transition. Like the way they've started this game. Hardy to Rundles from behind the arc, off the back of the ring. Anderson is first yeah, to it, he's, though. He's done a great job for with Coach Rob Paternostra this year, uh, Jamel Anderson. Hardy hard to the hole. There he is, keeping the ball alive again. Back out to Rundles, drives in. Oh, great good pass. pass. Good look. Lamble couldn't finish. Good work from uh, Thompson, it was defensively, and Fenoy comes up with it. Yeah. 
Oh, nice play from Smith, driving in, and he will go to the line for two. He's fouled by Hardy. Yeah, that was a really poor play by Aaron Hardy. He just needs to stay in front of him there, okay? Force Charles Smith to pick up the, pick up the dribble. He's always going to be called for a foul here. That's unlike Aaron Hardy. Normally does a much, much better job with that. Like I said, like Coach Rob Panosjad, what he's doing, Brett, Brett Royster in now. That's another player. Okay, Drew Sullivan back in for Aaron Hardy. Well, we talked uh, a lot about the MVP candidates, Aaron Hardy, who finished second, and Joe Chapman, who won the award, and they both picked up two fouls that's, in the first quarter. Absolutely, that's two key, two key plays. Um, I want to say one thing, though, with regards to Newcastle Eagles. Um, we cannot underestimate the job that um, Dave Forrester, who's standing there on the sideline, he's the assistant coach. He's really brought, brought calmness to what Fab does, and he's grown to be a, a really solid assistant coach for this team. Understands fully their philosophy, what they're trying to do. I've been so impressed by what he's done. Smith misses both from the line. Always, always got a good scout report as well, Dave Forrester. Yeah, Dave, him, Dave's uh, really, really, really solid in that area. Rundles to Royster to the hole, a little too strong on it. Flanoy pulls down the rebound. Sullivan got a little tip on that, knocked it loose. Rundles came up with it. Sullivan bouncing it to Royster, and Royster this time converts. I know that um, I talk, I've talked a lot about Aaron Hardy's defense, but, you know, one of the greatest defenders in, in British basketball is not even a question. And here he is. Here he is out on the break, and he'll jam it down as Riders come up with consecutive defensive steals, and suddenly they've left out to a five-point lead here. Well, and you know, I think they've done a, a great job. They, you know, they got themselves really into the game, but just these little Drew Sullivan with the tip there on the on the possession before when they scored, and some of the other things hit that uh, Aaron Hardy did. You know, Barry Lamb stepping into Charles Smith. It's an outstanding defense, but that's a great timeout by Dave Forrest. Yeah, they needed that, Newcastle. Just a little bit of a momentum. I would say Newcastle had the upper hand of this game for about seven minutes, but in the last 45 seconds or so, Leicester have taken that initiative and taken a five-point lead. Absolutely. And I think the key has been some poor offensive play by Newcastle, good defense by Leicester, which has led to, to easy baskets. If you play Newcastle in the half court, allow them to set their defense, it's going to be a long night. You have to score easy baskets in transition, and that's what Leicester have done, and that's why they're five points up. This is where the player coach job is difficult when you come out of a timeout and then have to try and get your breath back, get a drink, and then get your message across. Yeah, the only thing is that, um, you know, whatever we, whether you advocate the player coach or don't advocate it, there's never ever going to be a better person than yeah. ever than Fab Flanoy. And to be honest with you, he should go down in world basketball, not in <laughs> British basketball, because it will never be repeated anywhere in this planet what he has done. He has been the catalyst to this Newcastle success. We talk about their plethora of titles. Most of them have been won under the guidance of that man. Yeah, got to see something good now. Joe Chapman's back in the game. Got to get touches to Joe Chapman. He's the league MVP. Um, Leicester know they've got to defend the three-point line, but for sure now, they, you know, they need something. Thompson steps back at the foul line. Shot clock getting low on the Eagles. He's out to bridge, fires up for three. That's off the mark. And Sullivan is fouled wow. by Thompson going out. That's going to be two shots as well because the Newcastle were in the bonus. That's a poor decision by Andy Thompson, you know. And I mean, they're just going to give up two freebies here if they knock them down. Seven point lead already. I've always felt that, with, you know, I've, I've obviously know Newcastle extremely well, um, coached a lot of big games against them, and I've always felt that the most important thing is defending the three point line and standing up to them psychologically, which means that you've always got to be into the game, putting pressure on them, okay? If you're down, they can really knock you out in a quick way. If you're up, they're not as good and not, don't play with as much confidence as what they would normally do. Sullivan makes the second from the free throw line, and Cameron Rundles will be replaced by Brad Wisbicki for Leicester who lead by six here. Uh, he's doing, doing, a really, doing a really good job. Doing a really good job. Newcastle making a substitution as well now. Darius Defoe jogs into the game and will impound the ball as Thompson sits down. 
you know, look, uh, Coach Rob Panostra, you know, having the confidence to put Jamel Anderson on the league MVP. Young British guy playing the best player in the league. I love that. Here's Smith. Gores. Gores driving through. Fires up. Good deal. Yeah. Intimidation by Royster. Anderson has to keep that alive, and he does. Now he's taken out the play, though. Good pass by Yorick Williams. Sullivan backs out. Riders will get into a set play. Yeah, ball, the high ball screen. Newcastle tried to force this ball away from the ball screen. With Bicky steps back for three. Little short. Anderson going after it again, but yeah, this time job. Defoe comes up with it. This is where you've got to defend them. Excellent defense, force him to drive the ball to the basket. And Royster with the intimidation once again. Great pass. It was a great Lewis pass. Bicky to yeah. Anderson, and he's fouled. They love everything that Leicester are doing at this moment. Outstanding team defense. J uh, drive Joe Chapman off the three-point line. What did uh, Yorick Williams do? He rushed them, what we call flushed that ball off, the, flushed him off the three-point line. Force him to take a tough, contested shot at the basket, and now break quickly with a great pass by Bradley Spicky to, uh, to uh, Jamel Anderson. Anderson makes the first. He misses the second, and I thought for a second it might come to Sullivan, but there was the long arm of Defoe. Charles Smith, Smith. pull up three in transition, and I know that was something Rob Paternostra was talking about in the week. You've got to find Smith and Chapman Absolutely. particularly. And the whole week you talk about what I say, which is cross matchups. It means that you may not get the matchup you want. It doesn't matter who guards him, someone's got to guard him there. Sullivan driving in. Spins round, kicks it out to Williams. Williams steps into the elbow and hits for two. And that should just about do it. Newcastle won't get the ball in here in time. But an excellent last two minutes to the first quarter by the Leicester Riders has them up nine. Well, you can't ask to play a better first quarter in, in one of your first finals as a coach. And as most of the players is there, but you had big performances from Andrew Sullivan. Yorick Williams finished it off there. Riders lead here, 21 points to 12. We'll have the second quarter after this break. Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena where the Leicester Riders lead the Newcastle Eagles, 21 points to 12. And I know Leicester finished well, got some points on the board, but perhaps the most impressive stat there is they just kept Newcastle to 12 points in a quarter. Yeah, they've got all of them, uh, the intensity, they've got um, all of their uh, the, uh, emotion of this game going towards them at this present time. But, and it's a big but, this is a championship winning team. They were down 25 to Chester in that first game, came back to almost tie the game at, some, at certain stages. So you know that Joe Chapman and Charles Smith specifically are not just gonna lay down and die. That's certainly the case. Leicester will get us underway here in the second quarter. I, I just like, love what Coach Rob has done with regards to you know putting Jamel Anderson in this, you know, this game. Just a tremendous job. Sullivan, little head fake, fires up, little short tip from Royce that doesn't quite go, okay. and there's another rebound from yeah, I like what Drew's doing, taking Andy Thompson off the dribble. That's one of Andy's only real weaknesses as a defender. Flanoy around the screen, blocked by Royce, the ball is loose. Royster fighting after it. Anderson comes down with it, looking for some help out. It's going to be a jump ball. That'll be Newcastle's possession. You know, the, the funniest thing of all is, um, you know, when Brett Royster arrived after the change early in the season, you know, Rob was convinced this guy was, a great, was going to be a great shot blocker. He's probably been the only disappointment of the season for Leicester. But I tell you what, he looks like he's ready to play today. And if he is, he could give him another boost because he's probably not even heavily on the scouting report for Newcastle certainly is well over on the sidelines mark woods can give us an update from that quarter break interesting to hear from bob Lenoy in the time they're telling his team to cut out in the turnovers doesn't think they're playing good basketball wants them to be sensible as for rob paternoster and the leicester bench praise for his team says their defense is great but to make sure they don't chase newcastle the game going their way and he wants them to keep it up i i, I just wanted to make one quick point there dan um you know the, the facts are that uh, newcastle haven't played 
their best basketball probably now for almost a month and a half. You know, they've almost been going on that since that incredible game we saw here in January. Their, sl their performances are slowly declined. That doesn't mean that they're anywhere away from being a championship level team. But what I'm saying is they're not playing at that same level. So it'll be interesting to see what will happen in these next three quarters. Newcastle struggling from the foul line. Defoe finally gets one to go there. Hardy back into the game. Rundles back in game. Nice flare play. Fab guard in Rundles. On to Wisbicki for three short. Way short. Long way short. And uh, just talking to Brad a couple of weeks ago uh, after their uh, quarterfinal win, remembering back that semi final they played on this court against you guys, uh, he, he didn't have a great shooting night that night. No, he didn't. But, you know, he was almost, you know, it's four years ago now. And. You know, he's a, he's, a, he's a much more experienced player. I actually, the, the, the actual joke about it from that season is when he, when he joined the Riders, my players actually thought that he was like 15 years old when they first <laughs> saw him. And they couldn't believe he was a serious player, but he is a hell of a basketball player. Grew up on, this, on, the, on the hard courts of New York City. You know you can be a player there. <laughs> yeah. Traveling violation court against Joe Chapman. I think what happened was Chapman drew the foul off Rundles and thought I might be able to get him two quick ones here. Absolutely, that's great, great, great read there. Yep, absolutely, excellent coaching. Lifted up that pure foot. So excellent referee, and I apologize for that. Wisbicki round the screen, still going. Wisbicki to the hole. Great block from the foe. Darius has been outstanding. As a matter of fact, he possibly is Newcastle's best player at this moment. He's certainly been uh, really strong on the board. Picked oh, off by the Riders. Rundles two on nine. Decision. Gives it back to Hardy. Jams it down. That's so poor from the Newcastle end. You know, jumping up in the air. Look at this. Nowhere to go. And now Brad doesn't even steal the ball. He just catches it in his hands. And what a great handoff pass. Love that from a point guard. Chapman traveling violation court again. I wow. thought he was going to call a foul on Royster. Wow. I, I, you know, I got to admit that I, yeah, that's, we need to see that one again. It's, I think the referee's saying he landed back down on the ground. Let's see, he goes up. Oh, that's he a foul. He, he did land down. back down, but mainly because <laughs> Royster had knocked him down. He knocked him down. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Hey, that's what you need sometimes in yeah. life. <laughs> Sullivan to Royce. Royce has given him great minutes. He has. He's, he looks winded out there as well. Wisbicki this time hits, and the three fingers go up as he signals. Yeah, you know what I said at the start of the game. If Brad has a great game, I feel this could be Leicester's big May. Big three point shot. Newcastle looking real good. Smith trouble. to reply. No, doesn't go. Tipped out by Hardy. Leicester on the run. Wisbicki. Oh, great steal from uh, Smith and Flanoy. Oh. That's a play. four point, four point swing. Play. That's a four point swing. You had Aaron Hardy going to come down. Drew was taking him. That was a great job by Charles Smith, yeah. though. Absolutely great. Was Bicky penetrating yeah, through? That's, that's, that's great. I, I, you know, at least the referees are being consistent. A lot of contact there. Flanoy trying to find Smith and he oh, ended up stepping out of bounds. Poor turnover by Newcastle. Just trying to force the action. Like Rob here, I just said, you know, Royster is absolutely dead on his feet. He's, he hasn't played this many minutes in like maybe two months. I think he's more than that because he had the he had the injury where he was out for about six weeks and he's only just come back in the last month. Unbelievable. And he's been limited minutes since he came back because of the play of Sherlock and Anderson. Going with the horn set here. Sullivan into Lamble. Lamble with a tough turnaround. Ooh, oh, halfway yeah. down. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not very keen on that at this moment. Um, I like to. I like to think that. I'd like to think that. Uh, good job on Brad chasing Andy Thompson off the three-point line. Yeah, that's a two-pointer. Okay, keeps Newcastle in touch. Coach Rob has a has a timeout here. I, I didn't like that shot by Lamble. I want multiple touches by Cameron Rundles, who hasn't really got into this game yet, and Hardy and Drew Sullivan. That's where the ball has got to be. Not, not in your second secondary players all the time. Well, I mean, it, 
Lamble, if he's at the free throw line and open taking that shot, fair enough. But perhaps trying to make a move and, and pull up, yeah, is that the thing? Well, he got Drew is a great basketball player, so he's going to hit the open player. He was open. He got a turnaround jump shot against um, Darius Defoe, who's defended great at this moment. Didn't, I just felt that play could have developed a little bit further. On the other hand, Newcastle keep themselves in touch, nine down. This is a championship veteran team. They know they need to stay in touch. If this was a 20-point game, I don't think this is a Chester Jets scenario. I believe Leicester will win this game. At this moment, keeping themselves in touch, I think we're still in touch and have a great chance of a close game. Well, this is the thing. You look at it from a Newcastle perspective, they've not shot the ball very well today. Their free throw uh, shooting has been particularly poor. They haven't really done much from the three-point line, but there's still only nine points down. Still only nine points down, but that is the key to this game. Um, but like uh, I think last week at the, at the Jets, uh, uh, Chester Jets Arena, you know, Newcastle were really struggling, and then Joe Chapman hit three frees back to back yeah. to back and broke the whole game open, and they have that capability. That's exactly the point, is you cannot write them out because of their ability to score in huge bunches. Wizbicki turns oh, it over. That's another poor turnover. And Gores is running back. Gores under pressure, and Sullivan did well because he moved out of the way there. Yeah, Drew's going to get that call. That call. Wizbicki round to Rundles. Fakes the three, takes the two, and Newcastle get the think rebound. Cam I think Cameron's trying to force the issue there. Scores, penetrates, nice move. Oh, he missed the finger roll, though, and Leicester come down with it. Good job. Rundles, looking for some help as he's picked the ball up, gets it out to uh, Wisbicki. Lamble on the trail. Again, don't like that. Misses, but there's Hardy to pull in the really, rebound. Really scrappy play here by both teams. Don't, not, nothing in sync at this moment. You know, both teams have got to remember, go to your strengths. Paul Gauss is out there now. Run some high ball screen with him. Force the Leicester Riders to react to that uh, set. Leicester, punch the ball inside. Drew Sullivan, Aaron Hardy, get Cameron Rundles involved. Lamble, hands over to Wisbicki. Wisbicki turns the oh, corner. He's really aggressive today. Tough Doesn't finish. get that one to go, though. Both referees look like they're, they're letting both teams play, which is good. Hand in the lane again from Hardy to knock it out of bounds. Yeah, Wisbicki's going to get a break with Williams coming back. We don't start that in this country, but that's the type of play that wins championships. Those, and they have the two best players in the league at doing that. Drew Sullivan and Aaron Hardy, all ultra long arms, always getting hands on balls. Thompson hands it back to Flanoy. Nice spin on the low post by Smith, dumps it off to Flanoy, it's on to Defoe, and he hits. Uh, he's, he's become so solid with that shot. And now we look up, it's a seven point game. Some poor execution by Leicester, Newcastle grinding themselves back into this game. Playing really poorly at this present time, but still with the ability to keep themselves into this game. Lambo hands over to Rundles, Flanoy now guarding him very tightly, Absolutely. doesn't want him to go anywhere and almost steals it away from him, shot clock getting low on the riders, Rundles round the screen, keeps going, he's got to shoot, Rundles needs to get it off, it's out of bounds, That's great defense from the Eagles. Tremendous defense and the person keying it, Fab Flanoy, okay, on the ball of Rundles, the, what, you know, again, another one of our best defenders ever. Gorse fires up for three and hits! Well, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't lack any confidence, that's for sure. And he's now given them their only three-point shot so far. And now it's a four-point game. Sullivan, round the screen from Lamble, still going. Sullivan driving hard, gets fouled, almost goes for him, but he'll go to the line for two. So, uh, you know, we've had multiple touches for Barry Lamble, and we know Barry's been really good, but this is where you want. You want the ball in the best players because they're going to draw the contact. They're the ones that are going to get to the line. It was a good job, job by Drew Sullivan. He realized that they're totally out of sync at the moment. I actually would like to see Rob go back with Royster. I think Royster gave some great minutes. I put him straight back in there as soon as he's ready. Finish this half off. This is probably the weak link in Andrew's game here, free throw shooting. Yeah, his outside shooting and his free throw shooting have always been inconsistent. Um, and, you know, I feel that um, he's got better. You know, he's a street shooter. I think he'll make the big ones. That's the most important thing I'll say on that. Well, he's one of two on uh, both attempts today, which is right about his season average. 
but he was, as you say, six of seven in the semi-final last week from the oh, free throw. This is a mismatch here. Smith knows it, and Smith takes advantage. I'm not of sure it. what happened there. Um, somehow, Newcastle got their big lineup on there, apart from Gauss, but you can't have um, Cameron Rundles on on uh, Charles Smith, one of the best offensive players ever to play in this league. Hardy gets it out to Sullivan. Lamble from the elbow, that's yeah. miles off the mark. Just not the shot, and Cameron's got to come back to get the ball there. Fab pushing tempo again. Defoe on the trail with the pull-up. Wow, what a shot from Darius Defoe. Yeah, and look at, look at, like, you know, a couple of minutes ago when Brad Wisbicki made that pass that could have put him up like 14 points. It's now a one-point game. Champions, cha championship light level team never die, never lay down. Sullivan. Almost loses it, gets it back. Shot clock getting low again on Leicester. They're having difficulty. That's a holding foul called on uh, Thompson. But Leicester are having difficulty getting any sort of motion. It tends to be ending up one-on-one -on -one here. One-on-one, -on -one, they're very stagnant at this moment. They've got to run some quicker ball screen action. Get Hardy and Rundles into quicker ball screen action or Drew Sullivan. I like Drew at this moment. He looks very, very um, aggressive today. So put him into those type of situations. Here's Rundles, closely guarded by Flanoy, again, trying to lose him. Spins into a double team, gets it out to Williams for three, that's short. And, uh, oh, stolen away by Rundles, falling out of bounds, gets it back to Lamble. Lamble scores, wow. what a play from Rundles. You know, if they win the game by two points, that Cameron Rundles play could be a massive play there. Look at this, it looks for all the world as Flanoy pulls in the rebound, but here comes Rundle to smash it away. Here's the uh, matchup that we wanted there. You know, I don't know what happened on the cross matchup with Rundles, that's for sure, before, but Drew Sullivan. That'll be a charge on uh, Williams, scores, just getting across to get his chest in the way. Yeah, uh, Paul Gauss does a really good job, but Yorick, um, we know, five years ago would have just jumped over him um, <laughs> now a little bit more flat to the ground doesn't elevate as well and that's a great call by the referees and a great defensive play by Paul Gauss and I think the thing was that, that, that gave the Newcastle God the opportunity is Yorick put his head down and it was obvious he was going straight to the hole yeah and like I just said you know a couple of years ago he'd have just jumped over him <laughs> and scored but now he's more of a, a, a on the ground type driving player Rob and his coaching staff there, who've done a really good job this year, just talking over strategy. There we are, Paul, Paul Gauss into ball screen action. Thompson now to Flanoy. Offered the screen, takes it, there's a switch. Uh, uh, oh, Flanoy spinning through the gap, and there's traveling violation is how he uh, got there. I, you know, this is a tough call, because I think in the regular season, this gets let go, but here, he does change his pivot foot, but he spins really nicely through. I don't it's know. It's a travel. It's, it's, yeah. It I is. know you say it might let go in the, in the, in the, in the uh, regular season, but that doesn't mean it's right. Yeah, it's, it's a travel. I must admit, on first viewing, I didn't see it, but on the replay. Yeah. Okay, we got a great game going yeah. on here, though. Like yeah. what's going on. Tempos, I, I don't think anyone's established the, the real rhythm of the game yet. I think defense is winning over offense, yeah, that's absolutely. for sure, both ends. Rundles with the step back three off the mark. Yeah, I'm surprised Newcastle let him get that shot off. He won't miss that all game either, a little bit like Joe Chapman. Gorse gets it out to Flanoy. You're right, defense has really been strong in this first half. And they switched up again, which uh, left Smith on uh, Rundles again and every time. That little wave by Aaron Hardy there at Charles Smith, that's not going to get the job done. If he's got that ball on a small player in the block, you better go send a double team to him because he's just an incredible offensive player. Rundles is fouled as he fires up the shot. I think that was one of them where he felt the contacts have fired it up to get two free throws. Yeah, absolutely. You'll see this on the on the uh, replay there. Smart play, faked him, and Bab got a hand in on him there. You'll see this here. Yeah, he's got a hand on his hip. It's a pretty easy call for the referee. Well, I like this here, Jim, uh, Coach Rob Payanosh just sits um, hardy for that last 143, puts Jamal Anderson in, who did absolutely everything to be positive for them. Rundles makes the first, yeah, Anderson uh, in the first quarter got some great offensive rebounding. At this moment,
this game is being dictated by some of the secondary players. Darius Defoe has been sensational for Newcastle. Um, Brad Wisbicki, which we've talked about, had to have a big game, has been great for Leicester. But this moment, we, we really need to see the stars step up. And here's one of them. Here's one of them, Joe uh, Chapman. Gets it on to Smith. Smith, tough shot, is off the mark. Flanoy fighting hard for the rebound. That's out of bounds, and that will be off. Uh, I think it was Williams or Anderson. It'll be a Newcastle ball. Jamel Anderson asked for the, why, why, why that wasn't a foul. Unfortunately, young fella, you've got to be in the league for a little bit longer here. Fab <laughs> is, is a legend, a living legend. He might have bowled you over to get that rebound, but unfortunately, you're not going to get that call at this stage of your career. Well, I think the Leicester players have been warned any more verbals, and it will be a, a technical foul. Foul caught off the ball as Rundles is called for a hole. And, you know, Neil, you know, is a great, he's one of our best referees, one of, you know, been one of our top referees for so many years. And that was basically a warning for Leicester, you know, a little bit of hand check. Goals. Nice play, drives through. Oh, great body control. Somehow it doesn't go in, but yeah, between him and Flanoy, they come down with the ball. Under pressure, I think Williams might have got a bit of a block on it. Yeah, Newcastle fans really. thought it was a foul. Rundles, Rundles <laughs> flips it up. And now both sets of fans are going irate at the referees. As well, is always the case. I, I didn't like what I, I, you know, Cameron's normally one of the best finishers in the league. That was really surprising. Foul is caught. I think it was Sullivan reacting late. Call for the foul. Here's another not, look. Yeah, he's normally a really good finisher there. That's a tough angle. Tough angle. No foul there either. He did a good job of splitting through. Get a little chippy here. Both teams not really playing well. Defense is, like you said, winning over. So getting a little bit chippy by, by both sets of players. And that suits Newcastle Eagles. I don't care what anyone says. You know, this team will take the chippiness. Yeah. Because they're used to it. They can play through all of these kind of things. Oh, Whereas Smith. Leicester... You know, misses another one from the free throw yeah, line. Yeah, I mean, Charles, um, I mean, we, we were here for that January game yeah. where he was simply sensational, but Charles has always struggled in the last three or four seasons at the end of the season. But still a great player, so a long time in this game. Minute to go to half time. Leicester leading Newcastle by a couple. Yeah, not even guarding Barry Lamble out there. Oh, look, Rundle's lost his footing. Newcastle three on none. Defoe will jam it down and tie the game at 31. Timeout, Leicester. Yeah, Cameron's lost his footing two times now. There wasn't really any contact here at all. He just tried to make look. He just fell down. Can't really blame anyone there. Darius Defoe just with the flush. And Rob Paternostro calling a timeout with. 42.3, and this dunk by Darius Defoe, tying the game at 31. Maybe here, Rob, trying to get two for one on the offenses? Yeah, I, there's there's at least three possessions in this in this game. They don't actually have to go too quick. Um, I say they can get something, you know, fairly quick, you know, quickish developing. I'd like to see Cameron, you know, involved in it. And I'm not sure why Brad is not in the game. Rob's drawing up a play there. You've got to give full credit, though, to Newcastle. They could have been down and out here. Um, I, I still feel that Brad was Vicky Pass was a key player yeah. in this half. Um, really, really poor decision of that, um, and which led to a basically a momentum change in this game. But Newcastle, very, very, very strong in this last two or three minutes. Well, I think with Bicky's coming back in, it looked to me like that play that Rob was drawing up on the board there is going to see with Bicky cut out to the corner into uh, three-point range. Yeah, they could also ISO uh, Hardy's back into the game. So Jamel's out. I, I'd like to have seen Royce do a few more minutes. I thought Royce was giving a really good presence and rebounding inside. Um, but, you know, we now he's gone with his most settled lineup. I think this is the group he's played mostly this year. Yeah, Lambert doesn't start, but he has played big minutes off the bench. Other than that, it's the starting five. Here's Rundles. Yeah, putting Drew in at the high post, like the play. But Darius is not even guarding anyone. He's just, you know... Well, Lambert has to hit that to force him to guard him, and he doesn't. And Newcastle, actually, Leicester took so long, Newcastle can run the clock Barry, down. Barry's got to at least dive towards the basket there, at least act, you know, make Darius at least see him. 
Chapman has a look up at the clock. Chapman drives in, Good kicks defense. out to Defoe. Defoe fires off, top shot, doesn't go. Rebound, Hardy. Hardy's going to have to throw one from the halfway line. Oh, my goodness. Close, but not quite. Well, we weren't sure how much was between them at the top of the game. There's still nothing between them at halftime. Well, I thought for a little second there could have been a bigger gap. But at this moment, this is poised absolutely beautifully. 31 each, no real team with any clear definition. I think it's going to be a great second half. Very much in the balance here at the NI. We're tied at halftime. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the NIA here in Birmingham. If you can hear me above the music, it has been a fantastic first half. It's Honours Even, it's Newcastle Eagles 31, Leicester Riders 31. And uh, Mark Woods has been talking to Brad Wisbicki. Let's hear from him now. Brad, first half, deadlock so far. Assess that performance from Leicester. Yeah, great performance on defense. You know, we really executed, chasing them off the three-point line. Uh, we got a little stagnant on offense, didn't move the ball as well. So that's something we're going to look to pick up in the second half. What do you need to do after the break to try and get the momentum back you had in the first quarter? Continue the, the defensive intensity. You know, we've been great on defense, you know, and just a, a few more easy looks on offense and should get it done. Confident you can pull this off? Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Well, Vince McCauley is still alongside me. Vince, what did you make of that first half? Oh, wow, great and intense, wasn't it? It wasn't yeah. as smooth and as uh, clicky as we'd like it to be, but the defences were in charge. Both teams struggling to get something going. Leicester Riders really lucky, I think, to get themselves ahead by about 10, 12, 14 points. That gave them a cushion because you know the Eagles were always going to come back. So, really, I think it's fitting that we're still all square. Yeah, I mean, Leicester really came out of the blocks, didn't they? Absolutely. They didn't show any nerves, I think. Like we said before, we talked about Andrew Sullivan. He scored their first five points. That settled everything down, and off they were and running. Yeah, they're going to look to those key players, aren't they? And I know those two, uh, Williams as well, are doing a lot of the talking in the huddle as well. Well, these are the veterans. They know what it takes. They're trying to calm the guys down. They're trying to keep their minds on other things rather than what's really going on. So that's been good to see. But the dangerous thing, I think, the Newcastle Eagles only played for about five minutes, and you suddenly saw them switch into gear, and they look so smooth. If they can get any of that going in the second half, Leicester will be in some trouble. But they've got to rely on that hustle to keep Newcastle off the three-point line. Yeah, what about uh, Newcastle? Where was it going wrong for them, perhaps, in the first quarter? Well, you know, it's been interesting. They've got Fab there running the point, and last week it was Paul Gores, and then the week before it was Fab. So there's a little bit of uncertainty there, and that's a crucial position because that's who dictates how it goes on the floor. Um, so I think that sort of unsettled them a bit, especially when Chapman had to go out with two fouls. Now they can go back again in the second half. They'll have their big guns on the floor, all settled into the second half, and try and get their actual smooth game going. Well, let's take a look at some of the action as well. The uh, Leicester stuck in very strongly indeed, didn't they? Yes, that's right. You see, they're contesting every shot. They're boxing everybody out around the basket and picking up all the loose balls. It was a strong defense, really, and that's what Leicester's been all about. They've been the tightest, haven't they, all throughout season, the league? All season long, they've conceded the fewest points. Mm. Um, and really, that's what Newcastle knew was going to happen when they came into this game. With the long arms of Aaron Hardy there and uh, Andrew Sullivan caused those turnovers. I mean, the team, Newcastle Eagles, uh, they've taken their foot off the gas a little bit, haven't they? Ever since they they won the championship, fair to say, Fab rested quite a few players, didn't he? And that seems to be a little bit of a problem. They don't look like the team that they were. No, and that's always a challenge, you see, because you always want to win every game you play. But, I mean, Fab's make the decision based on winning a championship. Shall I keep on playing hard or shall I rest my injured players because I've got a championship game to win? I don't need to win these games. We'll see at the end if that was the right decision. But you mentioned the fact that Newcastle are always on it. Then they're, they're only moments away from getting right back in the game, and they showed that in the second quarter, didn't they? Absolutely. Four or five minutes in there when they had Chapman in the game, when they had Smith in the game, you saw them challenge everybody defensively. Defoe and Thompson have covered everything around the basket and made it really difficult for Wisbicki to see any light, for, Sol uh, for um, Cameron Rondos to see any light. And Gores, they're doing what he does best, strip the ball and going coast to coast. Yeah, the slight worry about Gores was that he looked like he turned on his ankle again. Yeah, I'm surprised he stayed on there. And here you see the three guys cause the turnover. Um, I thought he landed really awkwardly, but actually he's running off and it seems to be okay. And you see Fab there leading the charge. Real inspiration. Imagine if he's on your team doing that night in, night out. Yeah, like Tony was saying, we're running out of superlatives for Fab, and we have it. It's amazing is this guy and so fit as well absolutely he's in the best shape of his life he worked really hard the thing about Newcastle is they have a philosophy in the way they play they're not going to look for inspiration they're not going to look for something to react to the opposition they're going to play their defense the way it says in the coaching uh, locker room 
OK, so what will Rob and Fab both be saying right now to their players? Well, Fab will be saying in there, hey, guys, we haven't really played that well, and the game is tied. Let's not pick up those early silly fouls like we did in the first half, and we'll be fine. What Rob will be saying is, you know, he got a little bit of a medium range jump shot from Yorick Williams. He got another three-pointer from Brad Wisbicki. He knows he desperately needs those guys to spread the Newcastle defense so Sullivan and Hardy can go to work. If he doesn't get that, I don't think they can win. It is going to be a fascinating second half to this game. We've already touched on what an important year it's going to be for British basketball so far. Indeed, there's going to be plenty of changes to the way that it's played in the UK. Uh, we've found out a little bit more about it through Mark Woods. The spotlight on basketball is one of the most high-profile events at this summer's Olympic Games. The sport's various factions have come together to form the British Basketball Union. Made up of the BBL, British Performance Basketball, England Basketball and Basketball Scotland, the BBU will now be the shop front for anyone looking to get involved with the sport. A new website, launched today, will help bring the fans closer to the action. And with so many exciting events in the months ahead, you won't want to miss out. So that's the plan. Now let's meet two men charged with putting that into practice. We're here with Simon Tucky from British Performance Basketball and Kevin Routledge from the British Basketball League. Simon, let me start with you. You're already all working very closely together. What is this new union going to make in practice as a difference? Well, Mark, if you work closely together, it's never the top of your intray. If it's a formal organisation, as this limited liability partnership is, then it's the top of your intray and things get done. And that's what we want, things to be done. A lot of this, I'm sure, is promoting the game. The GB teams, of course, with a huge exposure coming up at the Olympics this year. How big an opportunity is this? Well, Britain's in the Olympics with basketball for the first time since 1948. It's the opportunity for basketball is now both to watch and to play and to participate by other means, volunteering, etc. We think now is the time to draw the particular merits of this game to people's attention. Not everybody loves football, and this is a great alternative. Kevin, a huge crowd here today watching BBL action. I guess the big thing now is to try and make sure this happens at clubs up and down the country week in, week out. Absolutely. It is an enormous opportunity. I think everybody wants to leverage the opportunity of London 2012. Working with our partners, I think we can really excite the country. We've got a great sport, and it's bringing that to the consciousness of people. This new initiative, 12 months' time, 24 months' time, what changes, what difference would you like to see this make? Well, what we want to see is people excited, a lot more kids playing the game, a lot more people watching the game, and, of course, a very, very successful national team. So we're looking forward to that. Simon, back at British Basketball HQ. Medals this summer, what are we talking, what's oh, the ambition? If I was you, I'd go and take a look at the odds you can get at the bookies now, because they're looking pretty attractive, but I can tell you they're undercooking it. We are going to do extremely well in the Olympics this year, and it's not just the men. I think the women, if anything, have got an even better chance. We are very, very confident. Let's keep our fingers crossed, Simon. Kevin, thank you very much. So massive ambitions there, as we heard. Um, what's your ambitions as the MK Lions owner and for basketball in the future? Well, I mean, we want basketball to be a major sport in the UK. We want to have facilities for all the youngsters to be able to go and play without having to search high and low. And as Simon Tucker just said in there, the women can be really successful. Women's basketball is growing so fast and so quickly. I think that's what most people are really excited about. How do they get involved, though, youngsters? We saw a few youngsters playing on earlier on today. Well, you know, the British BBL Foundation runs the Hoops for Health program. We all do that as BBL clubs, and member clubs from England basketball are doing that, where we're going out into schools, not only coaching basketball, but teaching a healthy lifestyle. It's a real beginning for primary age schools to do that, and then join local clubs, and hopefully get onto that ladder. Plenty of you have been getting in touch uh, via Twitter and via email as well. I just got one here. Uh, for me, Newcastle, they say, are amazing and have played as a team. They play, they're players of different qualities. That's why they've done so well to get where they are. This one, a tweet uh, from Jake Shady, I believe. Uh, please shout out to Aidan Haynes. He came all the way from Bradford on a push bike. That does show determination. Would you have ever done something like that <laughs> to watch a BBL? Bike. I don't think so. <laughs> Get the okay. train next time, Aid. Maybe next time we'll, we'll quote you on that one. Uh, let's hear from how Newcastle Eagles are looking forward to their third quarter. With that, we're going to hear from Andrew Bridge now. Andrew, you struggled early on, came back. 
What went wrong in that first quarter? Uh, just too, too many turnovers, too many offensive rebounds. We weren't taking care of the ball. Um, we gave up a few baskets where they literally, uh, we turned it over and they run it back against. No defense, you know, we can't do that. Held them to 10 points in the second quarter just because purely, you know, we cut down the turnovers. When we kept them in the half court, uh, we were fine on defense, no problems. You know, we got down big early, but we, we pulled it back, you know, giving ourselves a chance to win the game. Even Stevens at the half, what's going to be the key in this second half for Newcastle? Just keeping the turnovers down, you know, if we do that, um, you know, we're going to, you know, not have to, you know, panic or rush, and then we're going to get a chance to, uh, you know, take our time on offense, get some rhythm, we've got to make some free throws as well. Thanks, Andrew. No problem. It could not be tighter. Do stay with us. Join us after the break. We'll go back to Dan and Tony as it's Newcastle Eagles 31, Leicester Riders 31. Join us. Stay with us. Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham, where the Newcastle Eagles and the Leicester Riders are level at 31. And judging by the uh, interview that Mark did with uh, Bridgie at half time there, Fab Flanoy has just been pounding into them. Turnovers, 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 way too many. 15 points, that's half Leicester's offense coming from Newcastle yeah, giveaway. 12, 12 big, big turnovers. But I will say this, Fab might have been really upset about the turnovers, but I actually think he's got to be the happier of the two coaches. His team was almost out of this game, and then with real dogged determination, have found themselves back in. This is going to be a real tight game, maybe a little bit lower score into what we thought, but it's going to be a cracker. Rundle's round two screens, driving through, gets it out to Wizbicki. Wizbicki dumps a great feed from Wizbicki to Hardy for the stop. Well, you know, the big point of this game has so far been Aaron Hardy and Joe Chapman, the two potential MVP candidates, one have been the MVP, not really in this game. Joe Chapman, two points, Hardy four, he's just added to that total. Defoe misses, Hardy pulls in his seventh rebound of the game. He's still going, gets it to Royster off the glass oh. for two. And you know what? Credit Roy, uh, uh, Rob Padanoska for going back to Royster. He saw he was having a good game. Okay, he went back. Sometimes you just ride them. Well, Hardy, we talk about his triple doubles all the time. He's got five assists, seven rebounds. Love what Brad Wisbicki did there. Took the ball out of Joe Chapman's hands. Smith fires up over Hardy. Short rebound. Was Bicky. Good start by Leicester here. Rundles. Great hands from Flanoy. Rundles keeps it alive yeah. though. You know, you say great, uh, great hands. Um, Hardy gets his own rebound. It was almost a pass to himself off the ring. Well, that's his weakest part of the game. That's his that's his deficiency there. Outside shooting probably stops him being in a top league in Europe, in my opinion. But look at him. He's so good on the offensive rebound there and just goes straight up. Poor defense, though, by Newcastle. Well, a tremendous start to the uh, second half by the Leicester Riders. They've scored the first six points here in a minute and a half. A minute yeah, and a half some change. I actually felt that the momentum was actually with Newcastle, and I thought they would be the ones that came out. But they look very sluggish, both on the offensive end, Darius Defoe taking an out of rhythm shot, and then Leicester just, you know, doing what they do. He's talking about good hands from Fab. Actually, the even better hands were actually from Cameron Rundles to keep the ball when it was stripped from him and reverse the ball around so that Aaron Hardy ended up with that jump shot. Over by the benches is Mark. Let's hear from him. I was talking to both the assistant coaches were telling me what they were saying at halftime in that locker room. The Terrell Williams of Leicester said he believes they were defending well, doing a due job of shooting, rebinding well. The key to the second half is keeping up that defense. So far, so good. Dave Forrester and the Eagles bench saying for them, they have to stay together. Pleased that they held the Leicester to only 10 points in that second quarter. They had to stop the turnovers, but so far in this third quarter, not the job that they were wanting from their team. Definitely, you always know that uh, it's not quite been uh, on message from halftime when you see a coach call a timeout after a minute and 13 seconds. Yeah, but I do like that. That shows a yep. lot of confidence there to say, look, we're going to stop this run early. This is a, this is a one and done game. This is not a mess about. It's not a league game. So they're going with their bread and butter stuff. Paul Gauss back in to give a bit more tempo. Joe Chapman now on the attack. Dumps it into Flanoy, who's forced to back out. Shot clock down to five. Chapman fires up from behind the arc and hits. And we said he can go bang, bang, bang. 
Well, you know, uh, Rob talked about this uh, before the game with Joe Chapman. It actually, a lot of the time, he gets his shots off kind of secondary penetrations where the defense isn't keen on him. And that was a classic example. Rundles trying to lose Flanoy but can't. Steps underneath him, dumps off to Royster. Oh, he misses, though. There's Hardy underneath trying to keep it alive, does keep it alive. Rundle skips moving. it on. Was Bicky to the hole? He's blocked. I think Flanoy had it, but he stepped on the line. Yeah. Good defense by Newcastle there. Um, I liked what I see there. New, uh, uh, Leicester keeping the ball alive. Good ball movement side to side as well. Not too sure about Brad making this shot. Some big, big bodies in there. I think he was hoping he might be able to get some contact on there. There's an offensive foul court on the inbound on Cameron Rundles. I must admit, I couldn't quite see it from the angle I'm sat, but Rob Pandonostro isn't happy. Let's have a look. Rundles oh. He's kind of got hold of uh, Fab's Fab, hand. Fab's telling the referee, you can't do that there. Yeah, he did. He had him locked up, but that's just the post-up position. I'd like to see Rob maybe change the defense here just one time, just give him a different look. Oh, it's a terrible. Fab Flanoy absolutely livid with himself after that. Or and, uh, Andy Thompson, in fact, for not catching it. They're arguing with each other now as to whose fault that was, that turnover. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's one of those player turnovers, to be honest with you. One player just didn't, didn't, didn't read what the player was doing. Rundles, his shot doesn't go. He is so off track at this he moment. He hasn't made a shot all game. No, he, he's not, you know, had to be an important part of the game. Rundles is 0 of 6 shooting today, and he's had such a blistering playoffs he, series you're absolutely right there dad he's been on, on fire and he, he's just out of rhythm at this moment he's not nothing his rhythm that was his open jump shot and he, he would never miss that well, i would say that there's a, a foul oh, court on that's Rundles a big, there. that's a big foul now the only thing we don't like as coaches on this foul here is this wow that's a huge call this is what I don't like about this call. It's almost the same call as it was yeah. down at the other end. And so if he's playing, if this is the same scenario, Joe Chapman's got his hand locked in. So really, if you're saying if it's the same scenario, it should be an offensive foul on Chapman. The, the foul before was a poor call. I felt that one was as well. I think that was more the argument that uh, Pat and Ostra is making is that's exact. Great hands from Royster. Ball is loose on the floor. It came off Hardy's toe last. It will be a Newcastle ball. He's just, uh, Rob Padamastro is making that exact point. The hold at this end, the hold at that end, it's the same call as he got two fouls out of it. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a massive call. One of Leicester's best players. Chapman fires up and he's just shoved underneath by Yorick Williams. Now, 7-16. Rob Padamastro has just got a warning now. For, uh, waving his hand. 7.16 to go, and uh, Leicester have picked up four fouls, two and, a half, two and a half minutes. I actually can understand this with Yorick. I felt that Joe, I mean, there is contact there. There's yeah. no question. But Joe Chapman really initiated most of the contact. It was a poor shot by him. I think when you're up in the air, it's always a defensive foul. I haven't got a problem with that call. But it, the, as, you, as you rightly point out, four fouls in two min less than three minutes against Leicester. They're starting to feel things are going against them here. Yeah, absolutely. And to be honest with you, they don't need to because they were in good and nice control there. But Joe Chapman's come with a couple of big plays here. Now they're back in the game again. Love the minutes that Royce has given Leicester. I love what uh, you know, Paul Gauss has done with, uh, with with Newcastle. Williams fires up for three. It's short. I don't think they needed that shot. Uh, you know, I'm actually a little bit. Uh, uh, I I'm, I, the only thing I would disagree is the timing of the shot because I want Yorick to take three point shots. He's got some in him. I can tell you that for now. Oh, look at this here. Too aggressive. Now you go to the line for two shots for the rest of the quarter. I think Coach Rob is going to have to look at possibly change him to his to his defense. He's got the 1-3-1 in the locker, which has given lots of teams problems, gave us a lot of problems uh, when we last played them. That's the uh, that's the problem, of course, with getting in foul trouble so early, is you're just going to give Newcastle free shots and free shots and free shots. Yorick's just picked up his third, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he's going to have to go zone. I honestly feel there's not much that he's going to be able to do here in this quarter. He's going to have to see out this quarter. And you're just giving a great player like Joe Chapman 
con confidence from the line. He's getting to the line. He's not having a great game now. He's picked up some easy ones. Well, he's missed again. Newcastle. Really yeah, shooting. really oh. struggling from the free throw line today. Uncharacteristically so, Newcastle. I think Drew Sullivan's got to get back into this game. Sullivan trying to find a way through. And foul is caught on Flanoy. That, that, that one there is just almost yeah. a make up there. You, it, it's you almost it like good. it's 5-0 in the foul count. We can do with one. Yeah. You know that any type of contact now is going to be refereed pretty closely. Hardy. Stutters through. Gets it out to Wisbicki. Wisbicki back to Hardy. Hardy penetrates in off the back of the ring doesn't go fighting for his own rebound but Gores comes down with it great outlet pass from Gores yeah, to Thompson Andy, Andy Thompson hasn't had a three in this game either Chapman spins bodies left behind on the floor here is Thompson oh I thought that was in great work from Smith to tip it home uh, Newcastle with their first lead for what seems like the whole of the game is the momentum changing here? Yes, yes it, it could is, be. because Gaz has come up with a steal and he will lay it in and Newcastle have opened up a three-point lead here. Timeout call by the Riders. Yeah, unbelievable defense here. You know, Paul Gauss was one of the best. Strips that ball from Brad Wisbicki and goes up and even though one of the best defensive players can't track him down too quick. Well, it's the Geordie fans behind their bench who are on their feet making plenty of noise because they, like you and I, sense the momentum is with the Newcastle Eagles. Yeah, just, you know, uh, I, you know the momentum changed in two calls at this moment. The two Cameron Rundles calls took Leicester totally out. And plus, we know this for now, uh, Leicester really have no backup point guard to Cameron Rundles. They have Hardy and Drew Sullivan that can advance the ball, but they don't have a true ball handler. Brad can handle the ball. So they're in a lot of problems in this moment because really, truthfully, he's got to sit at least for eight more minutes in reality. Well, that was going to be my next question. At what time do you bring him back into the game? Surely can't be in the third, so you've got to wait till early in the fourth. Well, to be honest with you, though, Dan, sometimes with coaching, you have to really roll the dice. And if Newcastle go up six, seven, eight, I may have to roll the dice, put him in the back of the 1-3-1 the one, one, or a 2-3 zone, try to have him in positions where he's not going to foul and then have him out there because you can't afford to let this game get out of hand. A big few minutes for the chances of the Leicester Riders here, you feel? Absolutely. I think Newcastle sense that there's a chance for them to really turn the screws. And there was a little... Uh, grabbing going on as Sullivan went through the paint there. Sullivan hard to the glass, tipped up by Royce to Sullivan. They're almost playing volleyball back and forth to each other. But eventually Newcastle come down with Newcastle it. Newcastle was so good on the boards. They, they gang rebound there. Thompson out to Gores, head fakes, drives in, goes strong, doesn't get anything though. Flanoy with the rebound, wide open up top is Andy Thompson. No, another offensive rebound for Flanoy. Oh, good pass from Smith to a cutting Thompson. Let's do, two. Let's do a little bit unraveling here. You know, I like uh, you know, Rob putting Jamel Anderson. They need some activity out there. They need to get the energy levels up. All the noise coming from the Newcastle fans with Bicky oh, gets a score that Leicester desperately needed. They desperately needed. needed that. That keeps this game really close. But, you know, Newcastle at this moment, Andy Thompson sensing something here. Skips it round to Smith. There's another deflection from Hardy, but Thompson attacking the basket. Gets it out to Flanoy. Goes from way behind the line for three off the mark, and Royster with the rebound. Royster is just out on his legs. You can just see he's so tired. He just hasn't played any basketball. Sullivan onto Wisbicki, down to Royster in the low block, trying to go to work on Flanoy. That's Great a good move. move. That's a good move, and I got to admit, with all the contact that's been played, I even think that that's a foul as well. But referees let him play there. Royster starting to look, you know, look like the player he was when he first came here. Goss turns the corner, and it's so quick to get from the top of the key to the basket. Whoa, that's scouting there. You, you can't allow um, Paul Gauss going uh, right to left on a, on a ball screen attack. He's got to finish that almost all the time. Hardy. Uh, Leicester look really flat. Yeah, they here. do. 
it's funny, they're only down three, but they look like they're wobbling, Leicester. Yep. Newcastle, can they knock them out? Williams Good into pass. Royster again. Royster probably needed to recycle that. Hit on Newcastle, though, with Thompson. Yeah, Newcastle. He's going to pull up. No, he turns it down. Smith inside. Goes to work. Oh, he missed it. Looked like an easy one for he Smith. He did as well. Now Newcastle look like they're the team. Look tired. Oh, that's a foul Great there. challenge by Flanoy. No foul call. Referee's Smith. letting him play. Now this, game, down. this game's just up and down at this moment. It doesn't favor it. It's favoring Newcastle, which is surprising, but with Gauss out there, they get a lot of easy scores. I thought this one could have been a foul there, but Fab stood him up tall. Now Newcastle really looking strong. Wisbicki for three. Oh, halfway yeah. down for Brad yeah, Wisbicki. Out of, out of rhythm three. Wasn't in rhythm. Drew, Drew Sullivan looks tired. The whole of the Leicester team looks tired. Thompson attacks. Got to, got to suck it up here. Flanoy runs Just ran into, into his own player. He ran into his own player. And Wisbicki has it, and Wisbicki will lay it in. Abs asking where the foul is, but if you actually would review it, he actually ran into his own player. Just didn't realise it. Both teams looking really tired. Paul Gauss on his legs. He's tired. Both teams got to dig deep now. This is champion. This is for the championship. You can't let tiredness defeat you here. Chapman Chop. coming oh, around the screen. Like that from Yorick Williams. Chapman back again. Chapman fires up for three. Not quite. Thought that was in from where I was sat. You got both sets of players really tired. Blowing really hard. 43 46. Foul count completely the opposite for Leicester against, against the Newcastle tally. Darius Defoe comes back into the game. Newcastle will have the ball from the end line. They lead by three. This reminds me, Dan, of the type of games that we used to have on the second day of the semi, you know, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. semi final final where both teams really tied. They shouldn't oh, be. Of course, wide open underneath yeah. on the screen. I think Williams should have held back there. Absolutely. Should have been a switch on that play, that guard to guard action. Plenty for Rob Paternostro to think about. Well, this game is just completely changed without. Uh, Hardy with, with the jumper at the top. The game's completely changed, but if Leicester could stay in it until Cameron comes back in, I think they've got a great chance. Well, it was Newcastle who weathered the early storm and came back. Yeah, they're really small, by the way, at this moment, Leicester are. Chapman out to Smith for three. Long two, wow. long two, just towed the line. Charles Smith. And if he heats up, this game could be over in a, in a blink of an eye. Wisbicki gets it round to Anderson. Along the baseline goes Hardy. Sullivan steps back for three, and string music for Drew oh, Sullivan. You know, when, you, when it's the big play, you need your big players, and Drew Sullivan steps up to the plate. Another he's vital one. He's telling, he's telling Aaron Hardy there, no help. That's what he's just said, no help. Yeah, they're switching on those plays now. Wisbicki on Fab. Flanoy. Oh, great help from uh, Sullivan with the block. Now it's forward to Anderson, and he's fouled out on the break. What a play from Sullivan. He was telling Hardy not to help, but it didn't mean he wasn't going to. Yeah, he's, he's actually their big man at this moment, and you'll see a tremendous block here from the weak side. You know, not guarding Darius Defoe wasn't in the play. Tremendous block, Drew, with a massive play. Momentum slightly shifted. I don't know. I think if less, if, if they can keep themselves really close. Anderson has the chance to tie the game. He won't do that as he misses the first. I, I have nothing. Uh, I want to say this on the air. Um, hasn't really been given much credit, but you know Tim Lewis did an incredible job with those group of players yeah. in Essex last year. Jamel Anderson and the players I had, Miles Hessen, and then the two at Sheffield, um, Colin Singh and um, Zach Gachette. And you know Jamel here in big minutes, showing that these young British players can play. Oh, great pass from Gorsuch Smith cutting oh, to the hole. What that's a beautiful a great dive. job. Everyone expecting Charles Smith to stay pick and pop on the outside. He slips hard to the basket. Great pass. Brad doesn't read it. Hardy going inside. Just too much on that. Anderson making a nuisance of himself inside, but it'll be a Newcastle ball. Yeah, three points though. This is fine. Really want to be around that three-point area. Eagles have done a good job to get the lift, get this lead, but I think that um, Leicester have done a good job to withstand without camera. 
Same well, play. Goes going to the hole. This time he's fouled by Aaron Hardy. I think that's his third. But you, you, you know how you just sense things. If you just look at the two sets of supporters, the Newcastle fans are certainly making uh, uh, more celebratory noises, if you like. They seem a little bit more uh, uh, like the momentum is with them, the team on top. But, yeah, but this is a set of fans that only have experienced one thing, which is winning. And I feel that they feel they can win in any situation. So I'm not, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but they're just used to it. They don't expect to lose this game. Whereas Leicester fans, they've got to get behind their team. This is where their team really needs the, that push. Gauss, by the way, is having a great game for yes. Newcastle. Why they don't go underneath that ball screen, though, I don't understand. That's got to be in the scouting report, even though he made one free, forced him to shoot the free. Hardy with the crossover, hands on to Sullivan. Yeah, good switching by Newcastle. Out to Wisbicki. That's a foul there. I would have. And that's a block by Gorson. He's off and running. And he will lay it in. Yeah, they've got five seconds. They can still make something happen here, though. Sullivan throws it from distance. Oh, it almost goes in. But what a play from Paul Gors to end that first uh, third quarter. Unbelievable, jumped up in the air. I mean, the biggest problem of all with this play is though that Brad kind of uh, kind of sold it that that was all he was going to do. It wasn't anything else he could really do. It came from nowhere. It's quick, quick speed. And again, a little momentum thing. Leicester had kept it to uh, three but suddenly a good play at the end where they could have narrowed the gap a little more and Newcastle edged out to seven. Yeah. Yeah. The thing with Newcastle is they may not be playing their best basketball, but they're, you know, they've just got so much pedigree of winning and they're making plays when they're not really playing that well, you know, good. And, it, and it's all starting from the defensive end. They've made major defensive uh, stops. But saying that again, the foul count went completely against Leicester there. The Newcastle were able to play aggressively, only picked up two fouls. So he now can, does it get evened up in the fourth quarter? I still think we're going down the wire with this game. Well, Mark is over by the Leicester bench. What can you tell us, Mark? Well, it's interesting, Daniel, watching the Riders bench throughout this game. The players doing as much talking as Rob Paternostro, and I'm sure defensively they'll be quite happy so far. If you look at Eagles scoring, only Charles Smith in double figures, 15 points for him. But Eagles, they hang so much on their defense. They'll be satisfied reasonably so far. Defensively, their struggles so far. I mean, for Riders, Hardy, 10, Zerbicki, 11, the only two players in double figures. And Cameron Rundles with just two points coming into the game. They'd have been very happy with that. Now, the battle is who can hold their nerve over these final minutes. Well, that's the thing. Rundles, uh, you mentioned him there. Rundles hasn't made a field goal in the game. His two points have come from the free throw line but he is walking back out onto court now. Cameron Rundles, Rob Paternostro, rolling the dice here at the start of the fourth. I, I, you know, I think it's a great, bold coaching move. Um, and when you make goal, bold coaching moves that most of the time, you've got a real chance of winning games. I love that decision. Can't afford to have him off the court any longer. Defoe, out to Smith. Course. Defoe fighting for position, wanting the That's ball illegal. to the screen. That's illegal. Yeah, you know, he's he's actually one of my ex-players. He's yeah. one of my boys that, you know, from Hackney, but, you know, Darius on the step-up screen. That's going to get called almost the whole time right in front of Neil Wilkinson. Easy call to make. Hardy. they got to somehow get Rundles involved. I would put him into some more ball screen action, really let him attack. Sullivan steps back under pressure, fires up, doesn't go, but he got caught on the arm by Defoe. So two quick fouls in a row from Darius Defoe. Yeah, and, you know, what, what does that do? Uh, if they get another four. couple of fouls, you're now going to get into a situation where Newcastle are going to have the same problem as Leicester did, having to withstand those, you know, touch fouls and then go into the line for a lot of free throws. Now they've got to make them, though. Well... Defoe sits down on those four fouls. Andy Thompson comes in for him. Sullivan has been one of two every time. He's missed the first, made the second on his two previous trips, and that's his best outcome here. Yeah, they've they really got to make all kinds of shots, though, in my view. 
They've got to play with their He's best. missing both, but there's Anderson yeah. again on the offensive Great pass. job by the young oh, guy. Oh, it's through Yorick's hands. It's a backcourt violation. Yorick. Anderson did a great job, and what can you do as a coach with that? Wow. Anyway, they just got to get their heads up. They're in the game. It's seven down. They need a couple of good stops. They need to get themselves into a working margin, three or four points, take away some of Newcastle's confidence. They could be in good shape. But at the same time, a Charles Smith or a Joe Chapman yeah. dagger, and this game is going to get out of hand. Got to get it in. Chapman didn't get it in in wow. time. Five-second violation. Couple of calls going against Newcastle there. Well, that was just a, They just took too long from when he got the ball. They took too long just to start running their screens. Yeah, absolutely. You're right there. Can't blame Chapman at all for that. That's on the teammates. And yet Chapman's the one that will get the turnover in the stats. Not even guarding Hardy on this play. That's a foul Sullivan there. inside. Sullivan going hard. Doesn't have enough on that finger roll. Thompson with the rebound. Not a, not, I mean, it's not a bad play. Smith is open for three. No, over the top. And he claps his hands in frustration. Yeah, we've got um, both teams not playing their best basketball at this moment. You know, all kinds of... Uh, Really, I mean, they've just got to get Cameron the ball, in my view. Let him start initiating the offense. And I'm not sure I like it from this from this post. Uh, three to one, one to three ball screen. Sullivan, here is Rundles. Rundles drives through, Rundles to the finger on his first field goal of the game. You know, just put the ball in his hands, let him create. Good things can happen for Leicester Riders. Very athletic group for Leicester. Not sure it's their best group. But Yorick, you know. Double dribble is the call against Joe Chapman there. I thought Anderson had knocked that loose, but referee said otherwise. Uh, there was a lot of contact as well from Yorick. Here it is. Oh, it's hard to see because Anderson, Anderson comes across, but you don't see that call very often, no, I think it's fair to say. Absolutely. I like this is what I want to see. Rundles with the ball in ball screen action. Let him be a creator. He's a good passer. You've got Hardy in the post there against um, Joe Chapman. It's uh, sorry, Jamal Anderson. Anderson. Yes. Anderson steps under, gets himself in trouble, turns it over, and Gores is lightning fast, but he loses it. Oh. Bumped off uh, Hardy. Hardy then tried to. I thought Hardy was going to get called for a foul. I he thought, tried to. I thought he it tried was to a foul. call it the other way. I thought it was a foul. Um, you know, I don't know why Drew gave the young young boy the ball in that post there. I thought it was Hardy. They've just got to go to their senior players at this moment. This is not the time for young players. It's his energy time, but it's not for him to make plays. Smith backing down against Sullivan, trying to go to work. Fires over him. That basket will count. There's a foul off the ball on Flanoy, I think. It's either he or Rundles are on the floor. It is on Fab Flanoy. I was watching the shot, so I didn't see what happened. Yeah. Fab just fighting aggressively for the rebound, pushing and barging his way. Let's see if we can see on the top of your screen there, they're fighting for it, Fab, going round, and that's where, yeah, oh, and he's yeah, running just, to, the just, just yeah. to the ground. Good call by the referee, but Charles Smith can't let him get down that deep without any type of help. It's rare, Leicester really stagnant, too stagnant for me. Don't like, uh, don't like what they're doing at this moment. Sullivan. Newcastle are just setting their defense. Still Sullivan. Shot clock getting low. He has to fire up for three. It almost goes in. Yorick tried to tip it in. Anderson with the offensive rebound. Should have gone up first time. In the end, he got foul. Yeah, good offensive rebound, but... They're just so stagnant. They even drew to shoot the ball like that. Foul number four, that on Joe Chapman. Almost missed that as... Uh, yeah. As they went through. Four on Joe Chapman, four on Darius Defoe, four on Cameron Rundles could have an effect. I think the biggest effect is with two and a half minutes to go again. This has been Leicester's Achilles heel all season. Yeah, they are the worst team in the league at free throw shooting. Exactly. Now, Six admittedly, nine, Newcastle have been even worse today. But if ever they needed some free points, it was there. They Sullivan missed two, and now Anderson's well, missed two. Well, we're going to find out if it was their Achilles heel because they're going to be shooting every single foul now for the rest of the game. It's four fouls to zero, and that is a massive stat in itself. Flanoy, of course, it was the other way in the third quarter. 
As Lenoy driving in, spins round, fires up short, rebound Rundles. Got to push, push tempo now. Rundles, a little crossover, bumps through off the glass, not quite. Hardy gets the rebound, gets it into Sullivan. Sullivan converts. Yeah, I think this is Brad Wisbicki time as well. Uh, I, I think he's probably been on that bench just a little bit too long. I think Rob's got to go, got to find another offensive player. I know Yorick's doing a really good job on Joe Chapman. Gauss and Thompson in the ball screen action. Got to go under, got to go under, he switched. Foul is caught against Jamal Anderson. Yeah, that possibly wasn't a foul, but Paul Gauss has been fouled so many times without there being a call. They've got to give him one. Five-point game, very tense. Both teams are a little tired. Well, you got to help on the baseline there. You've got to go under all those screens. Pause. Round to uh, Lenoy. Shot clock low. Chapman fires up. Big shot for three. Doesn't go. Oh, great oh, rebound from Gals. the smallest man Gals on the court. Oh, what a oh, block oh, again a... from Drew Sullivan. Drew saved his team twice now. Paul Gauss, though, looks like he's probably got most energy in this game. Great little handoff, and Drew comes from nowhere. Sends that out. Not in, uh, not in his house. Goes from miles behind the arc, doesn't quite go. It'll be another offensive rebound, though. And Thompson is open underneath, dumps it off to Smith, and they just kept getting offensive rebounds. Absolutely, and uh, Andy Thompson with the smart play, not playing very well at this moment. Paul Gores trying to make the case that it came off Williams. Referee having none of it. It'll be a lesser ball, and here Brad, comes Brad. Brad had to come. Brad, Yorick's played a great game. Had didn't give him that killer three. But they needed some more offense. They have to make a run at this moment. They've got to make an indent into this score. Can't trade baskets at this time. Rundles to Anderson. Yeah, they're not even going to guard him there. Back to Hardy. Hardy goes the long way around, steps underneath. Did he walk with it? Yes, he did, said the referee. It's all one-on-one. -on -one. There's no movement. There's no, the ball's not traveling from one side to the other. They've got to get the ball moving, get Newcastle's defenders moving and sprinting out to Rundles, sprinting out to Wisbicki, then you can penetrate. This game is too stagnant at the moment. Six minutes to go. It very much looks on pace we got for the clean sweep for the Newcastle Eagles. And uh, Leicester have gone to their 1-3-1 for the first time in this game. Been really, really successful with this the whole of the last two months of the season. Can't lose the shooters, though. And Thompson makes them pay. Finally, Andy Thompson, who's been almost anonymous in this game, makes that three. You have to roll the dice and make some gambles. I like the coaching decision, just not the outcome. Rundles drives in, floats one up short. This is a crucial stage. He's getting away from Leicester here. Newcastle have their chance to put their... Uh, foot on the throat very much of the riders. Gores put it, penetrates through. Chapman drives in. Chapman off the back of the wing. It doesn't go. Was Bicky for Leicester. Oh, that was a foul there. That was a quick, easy call. Two shots right there by one of Leicester's best free throw shooters. And you're right, Dan. Any more, and then this is going to get out of hand. Four now on Fab Flanoy. That's the only blot on the horizon for Newcastle. They've got guys in foul trouble. Yeah, they have got guys in foul trouble, but the real, the only player that really matters is really you know, is Chapman. Oh, with Vicky Lester having a mare from the free throw line. He's normally an 82% shooter from this distance. Flanoy, is he boxing him out there? I'm not quite sure. No. <laughs> He's going from one side to the other. Well, at the start of the season, we, we talked about Leicester's um, only issues, and this was one of them. Even with Bicky misses them both wow. from the line. That was critical, critical. They really, they, they seem desperately needed two points there. Oh, what a move from Gorse. Dishes off to Smith, but he's missed on the, another close-in. Sullivan, what great hustle to keep that it alive. That was great hustle. That was just championship hustle there. I think I'd go back with Royster myself. Anderson, Sullivan, head fakes, drives in. Sullivan to the finger roll for the two. Well, they need a stop and a score to get this into a real game. Newcastle, you know, Gauss has really changed this game. His penetration, in a stagnant game, his penetration has been the difference in my view. Got to go under. 
And they're switching on it. I'm not, I'm not sure Lenoy. I like that. Shot clock getting low. Flanoy backing down. Gets it out. Dagger shot from Gorse. No. Off the back of the ring. Flanoy, can he save it? No, he can't. Whoa! Flanoy jumps. The advertising hoarding and the Leicester bench there. He's okay. His, wow. His desire is all is second to none. Look at this. Oh, it's just unbelievable hustle. Wow. He could have really hurt himself yeah, there, Pat Flanoy, but he's just trying to keep the ball alive. Ah, close was he to him. The advertising board Oof. as well. Wow. But Fab Flanoy and his Newcastle Eagles very much with the upper hand here in this playoff final. With 3.48 to go, they lead by eight. And if ever there was a team to close out from this sort of scenario, it's the Newcastle Eagles. Absolutely. For me, this is possibly the play of the game here. Um, Leicester have to come with some sort of really quick hitting type play. Yet I personally run with Campbell Rundles and Drew Sullivan. They're the players that are playing well at this moment. Two-man game. Get, the, get to the basket. The shot's not dropping at this moment. And then, if it's a six-point game, you're in a working margin. If Newcastle get this putt into double digits again, I don't think they're going to relinquish it. Well, four years he's been a coach for Pat and Oscar. He's won 98 games in that four years. He's by a country mile the most successful Leicester coach. But that could well have been the most important time out of his career as the boss of the Riders. He has to find some way to spark his team into this game. Yeah. I like Jamel Anderson's energy and everything he's done, but I just think that at this stage, I think they've got to go with some experience and the experiences with Royster. I know Rob wants a, a team that can switch on every single play, but I'm just not 100% sure. Newcastle switching on everything here. Hardy. Hardy's picked the ball up, gets it to Anderson. Anderson loses it. Hardy diving on the floor with Thompson. Hardy tips it up. No reset of the shot clock. Wow. That's a foul on course going after the loose ball. And that helps Leicester because there was only four seconds on the shot clock. That is a massive break. A massive break. I mean, just the play was a disaster from for the first second. And to end up with a good free throw shooter at the line for two shots to cut it to six. Woo. Well. You say, well, but Leicester haven't really managed to find their range here, free throws. They've missed another. Unbelievable. Rundles. Oh, they've missed two again. Amazing. And great hustle from Gores to keep yeah. it in. Yeah, of course, has just been the difference maker in this game so far. Oh, Top he shot. almost uh, completed that play for Lenoy. They can take some time out of the clock here, Newcastle. That was their big chance. Oh, he's wide open. Paul goes for three. No. Drew Sullivan, traffic rebound. That's the type of rebound you need. Hardy bumped to the floor slightly. Spinning for Sullivan, gets it to Hardy. Oh, what a pass from Sullivan. Yeah. Three minutes to go. Leicester still not done. It's only six. For me, the ball only needs to touch Drew, Cameron, Brad, and uh, uh, Hardy's hands. Just get it to your best players. Chapman driving in. Oh. He got pushed into him, I thought, there. But tough play. Joe Chapman forcing the referees to make a, pull, make a call. Sullivan called for it. Just have another look at it here. Just sort of leaned in with the hip. Yeah. I think if that's in the first quarter, that's going to get waved away. Maybe. Um, good call. Referees on top of this game now. Six-point game. Let's see if he makes these shots. The difference that will be the difference between the two teams. First one does go in. Oh, he's a great shooter. I, I, I just. You know, if it comes down to a free throw shooting contest, I don't think it's going to be close. He makes the second one clean as you like. Lead back out to let, uh, eight. Those yeah, Geordie fans a few minutes away. Rob saying tempo's got to be a little bit higher. They've got to just got to make a few more plays quicker. Rundles penetrates, dumps off. Sullivan. Good hands from Flanoy to steal it away. Oh, but Thompson turned it over. 
Wizbicki is open, this must go for Leicester, it doesn't, but they get the offensive rebound. Sullivan can't convert, Newcastle get another stop and it's time run out now that, on Leicester's chances. That there was the game, especially if Joe Chapman makes a play here. Eight point game, teams just, you know, you've got to make those plays. Joe Chapman with the youngster. Oh, Andy Thompson, Thompson. too oh. easy, scores. And Newcastle Eagles lead by 10 with only two to play. Well, Newcastle went and got the one player that was hurting them for the two seasons to win, to win trophies, and that was Andy Thompson. And he's come up big in almost every single game. It's the 25th season of the BBL. This will be the 100th piece of silverware won. And for all the world, it looks like the most successful team of those last 25 years are going to be the team that completes the clean sweep, wins that 100th piece of Good silverware. Trap. Good trap. Good trap. Excellent play. Got to be a call. Got to be a five-second call. Good defense. Five-second violation is the call. Gorse didn't want to give up the ball. Rundles was trying to get it back. They're both fiery characters. This is where it looked like there was going to be a jump ball, and then in the end, he calls a five second violation. Leicester trying to get the ball through. A little, little bit of nothing. A little bit of nothing. Blocking foul on Flanoy. He's fouled out, but with 92 seconds to go. He's just got a warning to calm down. But he just needs to walk off here. He's done his job. Fab Flanoy, his team are up 10 with 92 seconds to go. They've just, they just, they really just in this last quarter just out it. Uh, Leicester, if, if that's an expression, you know, their, their, their complete championship pedigree. If you look at it, they've got their championship players plus Andy Thompson, who's also won a, a series of championships. It was just a, you know, a match made in heaven, and they made the big plays. Well, Flanoy was just having a word with the coach. I think that's what Rob Paternostro was pointing out there uh, with the uh, officials. But uh, I think just one or two tempers fraying here at the end with such a big prize on the line, and it doesn't look like Leicester are going to reach it. That's probably why they're losing their, their temper a little. Well, 132 to go, two free throws. That cuts it to an eight-point game. Press full court, they have two fouls to give, so they can afford to be extremely aggressive on their trap situations. Maybe a quick steal, kick out, a three-pointer, completely changes. Well, that's probably how Rob Pappenhoster just threw it up in that time. Well, out. he has to draw it up as that. And then now, scouting report, you've got to know, who's the poor free throw shooters? Unfortunately, there aren't many on Newcastle. <laughs> yeah. You're looking at big-time players, Andy Thompson, Joe Chapman, Charles Smith, Paul Gauss, and now Darius Defoe, who's actually become a very reliable free throw shooter, around 70%. But part one of that scenario you drew up is Leicester making two free throws and they haven't looked like doing that in the fourth quarter. Uh, they haven't looked like doing it for the whole game. That's the biggest problem of all and that's the reason why they're down 10. And they still don't look like doing it. You know, it's uh, it's really interesting, you know, knowing and seeing these teams now for the whole of the season and, you know, Newcastle have eat out all of the big wins. Leicester, you know, for oh, short. gets his own rebound. Leicester just cannot buy a free throw. I don't think they've made one here in the fourth quarter. I think they're 0 for 8. That will be a foul on uh, Sullivan. On the floor, said the referee. Yeah, but they have such a big possession. You know, um, Rundle's just with the chippy shot. It's a good foul, but that was what was happening. You know, that was where it really needed to be here. If Leicester were going to make a dent, make Newcastle think. Thompson hands over to Chapman. They're taking the air out of the ball here, exactly. Newcastle. They've got to go run some doubles at this. They've got to do something because they need the ball. That will do it for Cameron Rundles. His game has been run, and it's not been his best, I think it's fair to say. Got himself into foul trouble. Couldn't, I mean, 
you've got to give credit to Newcastle, the way they defended Cameron Rundles in that first half, really shut him oh, down. Absolutely fab, you know, zeroed in on players like he always does. Knows where the weak links of a team are and where the strong points are. And that's what they did. You saw in that first half, Cameron Rundles coming off a ball screen action. They just doubled him. They stayed with him. They made him give the ball back out to a secondary player. And they made any of the shots he took very difficult. And, and you see how he uh, missed those free throws down the stretch. You just wonder, is that in the back of his head because yeah. he's missed all the shots earlier Absolutely, on in the game? Absolutely, yeah. Good hands from Hardy to knock it loose. Scores, penetrates, dumps off to blocked by Hardy, kicks it out. Leicester have it, but they still trail by 10. Got to pull need... up, got to pull up here. Sullivan right. goes for a lay -in. A little bit too late now. They don't have the fouls to give, but they got a foul. They have to foul here. They have no Rob option. Rob Pavanostro is shouting foul and foul him, and Yorick Williams put his hand up, and uh, I think Newcastle are wanting a continuation on that. They had to foul up here. They've got to extend the game. It's tough. Chapman will go to the free throw line. Crowd a little bit subdued. I think they thought it was going to go down to the wire. It's been a really tough defensive game. No, neither team's played really well offensively. Uh, Joe Chapman converts the free throw. This will make it a 10 point game. Newcastle honing in on a second clean sweep of BBL honors. They won the cup, they won the trophy, the league, the coach of the year, the player of the year. And now they're seconds away from the playoffs. Williams fires up, towed the line, doesn't go anyway. Newcastle again coming in with the rebound, and the foul is on Aaron Hardy. But it doesn't matter now. It's just about how big the winning margin will be for the Newcastle Eagles. The Geordie fans are getting to their feet. The celebrations can start in earnest for those who've come down from the Northeast, bedecked in black and white. And these fans go everywhere. They are a tremendous set of supporters. You know, we've, we've said it so many times. Um, you know, the, the best team, the best organization, you know, one of the best venues, if not the best venue in the BBL, and the best set of fans. I mean, it's been a complete year. What a tremendous turnaround from last year to this year. And you've got to give credit, not just the fans. Oh, Chapman steals it away as Leicester tried to let time expire. They were trying to save the clock by rolling it along the floor, but Chapman dived across to try and get it ticking. Actually, it is a Leicester ball because it's a jump ball. Yeah, absolutely. What a what hustle. I mean, at this stage of the game. Yeah, I mean, you could what are you you could argue, what are you even doing it for? You win it by 10 with 30 seconds you know, to go. Say, that is the play that, of a champion. And that's the point. I mean, Dan, we're at the end of the season. There's nothing else to worry about. You can, you can worry about your body for the whole of the summer. And what? A legacy Fab Flanoy is leaving for this Newcastle Eagles as Wisbicki's three doesn't go. He just has turned them into a relentless machine. Yeah, and, also, and you pointed out last year they didn't win anything yeah. and how that's inspired them this year. I also want you, to, you know, to give full credit, as we always do, to Paul Blake. Um, because, you know, the owner of Newcastle Eagles, you know, who's revolutionized almost the sport and what he's done. He's given Fab that ability to keep re-signing the players, to go out and get Andy Thompson when they knew that, you know, that was the critical player to put them over the top. So full credit to Fab, to his players, but, you know, also to their management, who've done an incredible job. And just while the Geordie fans are celebrating, Aaron Hardy's just fouled out, sat down. What a season he's had. Yeah, I mean, you know, just an incredible all-round player. Um, one that we've not seen before like uh, for a long, long time and uh, deserves all the credit uh, for the game. But unfortunately, this is about winning and losing. And so, I mean, it's going to be tough to decide who's the MVP, but I've got Paul Gauss personally. Totally changed the complexion of the game. Hagen fires up for three, string music, and the young kid comes off the bench and gets some points in the final, but it doesn't matter because the new 
Newcastle Eagles on the 2012 BBL playoff final. They have completed the clean sweep of domestic honours for the second time in their history. A tremendous job by Newcastle. They look like they might be wobbling through the playoffs. None of it. They've come all the way here and got their hands on the silver and gold basketball. Absolutely, Dan. Uh, you know, a little bit anticlimactic at the end there. I thought that the game could be really close. And Leicester just never rescued that momentum in the second half. They had a few op opportunities, but what it comes down to is big game players. Joe Chapman, Paul Gauss, Charles Smith, and then Andy Thompson making all the big plays in the second half. Yeah, Newcastle, just when they... I mean, some of it, we talked about the plays in the second half, but let's just think back to that. Uh, uh, second quarter where Leicester were up 13, a chance to go up 15, and Newcastle came all the way back to draw level at half time. How important that was! Well, I thought that that play was critical at the time because Newcastle looked like totally out of the game, and that handoff you know, that Brad made, the steal for Hardy. Just I'm just going to interrupt you, Tony Mark's got Joe Chapman over on the court. An injury last season you said you wanted to come back and win some trophies for this season I'm sure you're pretty happy I mean it's an unbelievable experience right now to come out and get four I mean it's something we set our eyes to and to doing it for me it's just a personal accomplishment for myself and uh just full of emotion today is on Mother's Day back home and my mom passed four years ago so it's just it's all it's just so much right now and uh, I'm just enjoying the moment what makes this Newcastle Eagles team so special as it's our heart and desire I mean we never we never quit even when we're down in the first quarter we always believed in ourselves we got a veteran team and it really showed today and why do you top this next season now are you coming back um, well, it's, it's the thing we're going to have to decide for the summertime, but it looks good for us, and uh, we're going to try to get the same team back here and do it again and hopefully do better things. Well, now enjoy the celebrations. Thank you. Well, that's one of the things about Newcastle is because they keep bringing back the same core group of guys, guys who know how to win, whose medals weigh them down. They've won so many. It, it, that's one of the key things to their success. You're absolutely right, Dan, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Fortunately for them, unfortunately for the rest of the league, the league is always playing catch up with that situation. And, uh, you know, I, again, they, like I said, they addressed their weaknesses last year. You know, Andy Thompson just added an incredible dimension, and so did Paul Gauss. Totally changed the, the complexion of the team, gave them two areas that they were weak in, and they obviously were able well, to. Well, the medal presentation has just got underway. Cameron Rundles has gone up the Leicester Riders first one to, to get his medals and really I mean Newcastle just did a stellar job but a quick word for, for Drew Sullivan who who had 18 points for the riders and eight rebounds yeah I mean you know we say that Drew's the winner and he came up with a big performance unfortunately you know it was just those those younger guys and you know can, can, can we just not maybe we just didn't give that enough credit for the fact that they are rookies this was their first big final it was a big final for the organization and just never got the, the best play out of them if the game had been played one week earlier um, when they were rolling possibly a different result but well maybe uh, that's something a, a good point that you make there tony 12 points 12 uh, rebounds seven assists for aaron hardy and Cameron Rundles, the two guys who've come out of college in their first year of pro basketball and played so well. And it's just a quick uh, thing for Rob Paternostro and how well this guy does in recruiting, the job he does in the summer. Yeah, he does an incredible job. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's not everyone in the league knows that the budgets are not comparable for both teams. Um, and that's why Newcastle are obviously able to keep, you know, bringing back their best players. Otherwise, another team might go and take their best players if they had a bigger budget. So, did an incredible job. And let's also uh, acknowledge Newcastle because they also overcame the Plymouth Raiders, who, in my view, still had the best roster in this league. Well, the Newcastle Eagles are getting ready to once again get their hands on the playoff prize. I always think it's the best looking trophy in BBL basketball, that silver and gold basketball. Yeah, I actually feel a bit weird at this moment because in the last two years I've had my hands on it. But the year before they had just beaten us on a game shot. But um, yeah, it's a weird feeling, but they've, done, they've been tremendous to be able to do that. Paul Gores goes up uh, uh, to get his 
medal, 13 points, uh, eight rebounds. Uh, he really gave them a totally different dynamic to that. Just, this game was a defensive, slow-paced game. Then the one player that seemed to have the energy and the speed was Paul Gals. I thought Cameron could have done that for Leicester, but that, basically those two calls were the critical calls. The third and fourth fouls in that third quarter changed the complete co uh, complexion of this game. Newcastle, uh, all their uh, players and uh, coaching staff going up and getting their medals. And you can see, it, it just goes to show that it doesn't matter how many times you've won, you can see the enjoyment they get from every victory. Here's Joe Chapman, the league MVP, going to get his medal. Well, if, you, if you remember, that they, they hadn't won a trophy, you know, for almost a year and a half going into this season. So they were hungry. There's no question that they came hard and better, you know, than any other team. Like I said, I felt Plymouth had a great shot at them two or three times in this in this season. I really felt they should have pushed them right to the edge in the league. I felt that that team underachieved. I'm going to be saying it now. They had an unbelievable roster, and for them not to be in the playoffs challenging them was also a travesty. Here's Andrew Bridge, then the captain, getting his hands on the BBL playoff uh, trophy. And the Newcastle Eagles, the most successful team in BBL history, are the side to win the 100th trophy in BBL history. It's their fourth of the season. They've done a tremendous job all year, and now Bridge lifts it aloft and turns to the Geordie fans who raise their hands and cheer and celebrate. And what a memorable season it's been for those fans. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, they travel everywhere. And when we say everywhere, they, when their team isn't playing, they're traveling to watch other teams play. They are true basketball fans, come to accustomed to winning as well. Um, and like I said, full credit to Fab, um, all his backroom staff, and Paul Blake, and the whole of their organization. You know, great organization deserving of the, of the winning of this uh, 2012 just, championship. Just one more uh, award to be given out the Most Valuable Player Award, and, and it's it's been a bit of a tough choice here today, Tony. Where, where were you leaning? I'm leaning on Paul Gauss because I thought he changed the complexion of the game, but I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to Charles Smith, um, possibly Andy Thompson, but I, I would think that it has to be Charles Smith or Paul Gauss myself. Well, Charles Smith had uh, 21 points, nine rebounds, four assists. Those are sort of MVP is shorter numbers. That, yeah. that could I mean, be no player, no player really stood out today. I think it was a combined team effort for the defense that really won them the game. They should give the MVP to the team because I don't think there's one player that stood out. Well, they're just calling the stats out over the uh, PA and they match the line that Charles Smith has. And having been MVP in the cup final on this very floor in January, Charles Smith has done it again. And he's got that little dance that he does in celebration. I want to say this because we we're almost out of time for ourselves. But I'll say this, Dan. It was so close that he had retired officially last year. He doesn't come back in the summer to Newcastle Eagles. I don't think they win four trophies. A great game for the Newcastle Eagles. Let's go back to Vicky in the studio. It certainly was a fantastic game. Vince, what was the difference for the Newcastle Eagles? Well, you know what, Vicky, the difference for the Newcastle Eagles was fabulous flow noise. You saw him leap over the Leicester bench, jump over the advertising hoardings to chase down a loose ball. That's why Paul Gores was able to block Brad Wisbicki on a three-point shot and lay it in. That's why Joe Chapman dived on the floor to save a ball when there were 10 points up with 29 seconds on the clock. He really was fantastic, wasn't he, Chapman? I know there's always got to be one loser, though, hasn't they? Hasn't there? And a, a real disappointment for Rob Patanostro today. Rob will be bitterly disappointed, as all coaches are who lose in finals, but the Leicester Riders to keep their heads up and walk with pride. They've had a tremendous season this year, a great record, the best record in their franchise. The fact is, they'll be better for this experience and come back a lot stronger. Yeah, I mean, what will he expect from the next season then? If you, you say it's going to go, come back a bit stronger, yeah? The big challenge for Leicester will be, can they keep hold of their players? Um, the Newcastle Eagles bringing back Charles Smith, bringing back Darius Defoe, bringing back Andrew Bridge, the players that count. That's what's made them a championship team. If Leicester can bring back Aaron Hardy, bring back Cameron Rundles, 
bring back Andrew Sullivan, that will give them the best opportunity. Just very briefly, all the sweeter for Fab because of the illness as well. Well, last year, not only was Fab seriously ill, Joe Chapman had what would have been a career-ending injury for most people with an Achilles tear. They both come back. Charles Smith thought he was going to retire in the summer. He's come back. They're never going to leave, are they, if they keep on winning? <laughs> no, they are never going to leave. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. It Thank was a you. fantastic afternoon. I'm sure you'll agree. Victory for the Newcastle Eagles. It was a clean sweep in the end. Hope to see you again soon.